race. happy. Off to a great start. <laughs> oh, my headphones weren't plugged in. Headphones are not plugged music. in. And I was like, I oh, hasn't started the music yet. Oh, yeah. The music's gone. Uh, we've begun, guys. Hello. Hi. Hey, man. On this uh, Tuesday, uh, gang's all here. Moon and, <clears throat> and Rafe. And I was King's worried about Willie. Had. Well, yeah, Willie Nelson is uh, trending. I, on, I just uh, said, Willie Nelson's trending. Oh, no. Yeah, he threw me on Twitter. He's fine. Yeah. He's, fine. He's fine. Panic. Well, it's always when you see an old person trending on Twitter. Yeah. At four in the morning. Yeah. At four. His heart's young. And we've only had, let's see. So we had uh, Tony Bennett, Donnie Baker. So there's a third out there because they die in threes. Who's Donnie right? Baker? Whoa. Donnie Baker from the Bob and Tom yeah. show. Yeah, Ron Sexton. Uh, comedian. Oh. Pass yeah, away. Very funny man. Uh, yeah. When did the, the Tony weekend. Bennett thing happen? Because I feel like Friday. I was Friday. Oh, really? Whoa. In the show. I didn't see so that. So did Ron, we, Ron died on set Friday as well. We offered a congratulations to uh, Tony Bennett. 96. 96. 96. Dang. And he was making records like two years ago, right? And he al had Alzheimer's and still was playing shows. Yeah. Incredible guy. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> I did want to start off with, uh, with a couple things I did learn this morning. All right. Uh, or as Moon would say, a couple things I learned. Yeah, there's a T at the end of it. Uh, I never knew what uh, exsanguination meant. Mm. Okay. Yeah, you taught you taught us. Not only did you learn, but you taught. Did you what? say ex sandwich nation? Ex sanguination. Mm. Would anybody like to look that up? Uh, learn. Would you like to look that word up? Sure. And you tell us the definition. Ex. Can you spell X it? E X S A N G U I nation. Exsanguination. Uh, mauling? It's not pleasant. This is wow, a... this is not what I thought. It is not a, be. it's not pleasant. No. <laughs> the act of draining a person, animal, or organ of blood. Yes. Wow. Yes, yes. Severe loss of blood. Exsanguination. Bleeding out. Dang. And there was a woman. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, used in a sentence, uh, Amy's cause of death was determined to be exsanguination due to a bear mauling. Dude, this is how I'll go. Night. This is it. I will die by exsangu whatever. Exsanguination. <laughs> Exsanguination. 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 Oh, man. No, no, I no. just know it. That's why I stay off those woods, man. H headline, woman found dead in Montana after grizzly bear mauling near Yellowstone mm. identified. God, man, that sucks. Did she get a selfie, though? That's the question. No, see, this wasn't one of those. Oh, really? Nope. Oh, it was near Yellowstone. It wasn't in. Okay. Near Yellowstone. So, 40-year-old woman... Amy Adamson from uh, Derby, Kansas. Saturday morning, game wardens with the uh, Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks were notified that a hiker was found deceased on the Buttermilk Trail near the town of West Yellowstone. God. I guess uh, she was hiking in the morning, as she normally does, and I guess cross paths that sucks. with a grizzly. Absolutely terrible. Mm. And a cub. She have any, uh, and, th and that sounds like what it was. She, she surprised a mama bear. <laughs> Probably got bet or got between mama bear and cub. Oh man! Or that was it? There's a second cocaine bear on the loose. We don't know about yet. We don't know yet. It. It's too early to tell. Mm. Yeah. Did it say if she had any uh, defense? Uh, defensive. I mean, I, I think bear mace is illegal there. I know it is. They in, said they had no it, bear spray. She wasn't carrying that. It's illegal there. I don't and think you so. Can't, you can't have it in Yosemite. I don't know about Yellowstone. I don't remember. Well, well outside Yellowstone, you can. I've been to Yellowstone. Uh, you four, can't four have bear times. mace in a place where you could potentially be mauled, exsanguinated, exsanguinated. Even we are, we are <laughs> exsanguination. Oh my god! Yeah, I don't want none of that. <laughs> oh, that you, is the song. Thanks. <laughs> thank you, Ray. Nice. Uh, okay, the woman was, goes right. The woman was discovered following an apparent bear encounter. Uh, okay, buttermilk trail. Investigators found grizzly bear tracks at the scene. Investigation's ongoing. What a bummer, man. Uh, wildlife officials said bears can be found throughout the Montana area. In recent years, grizzly bear populations have expanded. Good. Uh, they released a list of precautionary steps to take before venturing outdoors, which includes carrying and knowing how to use bear spray. Mm. I got so many girlfriends that live in the mountains that are like, just going on a morning uh, hike by myself, and I'm just like... My Midwest heart, and I know it's small-minded, but I'm like, oh, my God, please. It's either going to be some ravaged man or it's going to be some ravaged bear. And, like, this, these stories like this freak me out. You shouldn't confess this stuff. Well, I will tell you that Yellowstone has been a national park since 1872. Mm -hmm. It's one of the coolest places in our entire Absolutely. country. And I want you to guess how many people have died due to bear encounters <laughs> since 1872. Okay, so let's see. 1872... 
1872. How, how, how many years is that minus, you know, like... 150, give or take. So 100, yeah. okay, wait, 20, 23, minus... Well, what was it? 151. 18, 1872. 151 years. I'll say 300. 151 years. 300. I'm going to go 130. Two a year since its inception. So I think since, we had a few years we got lucky. I will since say Yellowstone... 411. And, well, since Yellowstone was a national park established 1872, Rafe, would you rather, would you... Give a guess. 12. 12. That's a good one. No, you know what? I'm going to say 190. 190. Yeah. So we got 190. 300. 300. This is death or, or attack at all. Killed. Mm. Killed by bears. Mm -hmm. No other animal. In Yellowstone. In Yellowstone National Park. Since I'm all over. 1872. Yeah, Even 100. 100. The answer is eight. Oh, Woo! okay. Eight. So That's it's great. very rare. That was close. Thank very you. rare. Yeah, congratulations, Rafe. But you were over. So price smart rules. So negative one. You win nothing. Well, <laughs> still in the showcase. According to the National Park Service, eight people have been killed by bears at Yellowstone. So if you encounter a grizzly, now which of the ones that have been spotted around here every once in a while? Is it black those are, bears? Those are black bears. Black bears? Yeah. Uh, what are you supposed to do if you encounter a black bear? Black Bla bear. Black bear, you... Uh, Pimps make yourself big? Yeah, make, make yourself, yourself big. big. Put, put your hands up, kind of oh. yell at it, yeah. and you slowly <laughs> walk backwards. Walk backwards. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Last thing to do is climb a tree or run. All right, don't, so don't turn your back on it? Uh, no. I wouldn't personally. I don't okay. Know. Befriend it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Offer, Offer it honey. Pick a nickel basket. <laughs> yes. I mean, this is where people need to do my training course on how to survive these animals because there's certain tickle spots on every bear that you oh, need to know. Tickle yeah. spots. Yeah. That'll get them. Yes. <laughs> I would like to take your class up, please. Okay. Yes. <laughs> stay stay really cool. Good. Sounds cute as hell, huh? I'm down. I've Until you get your arms ripped off. You come out in a bear costume. All right. <laughs> get under those pits. Everybody else is making themselves big on the trail, and Scott's Gucci, Gucci, Gucci. Yeah. yeah. I don't, yo, go ahead. Try that. <laughs> yeah, I will. Stay we cool. lost our beloved King Scott today. <laughs> Definitely don't panic. No, number one is stay cool. Okay. I love that. No, I'm telling you, man. Be cool, man. Be, be cool, cool, man. Yep. Be cool. cool. Be cool. Your life depends on it. Be cool. You start freaking out and panicking and all that kind of stuff. That's all. All that's going to do is agitate the bear. Agitate the moment. Okay. Uh, okay. That's a black bear. What about a grizzly? I think you uh, you bend over like this, <laughs> and you kiss your ass goodbye. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's a play dead one, right? Uh, if you're attacked, I think. It oh, is. and yeah, play dead and protect your vital organs. That's if you're, yeah, I think if you're attacked. I think it might be. <laughs> all of them? I mean, it sounds like that's what this With one what? did. Like, I mean, did she try to run? Did she do the thing where she I don't know. They the don't, fetal? She was I don't by know. herself. Okay, it Poor says, if you encounter a grizzly, do not run, all caps. Avoid direct eye contact. Walk away slowly. If the bear is not approaching. Just start whistling. If the bear charges, stand your ground. You will not outrun it. Do not scream or yell. Speak in a soft, monotone voice and wave your arms to let the animal know that you are human. If you have pepper spray, <laughs> I'm a human. Use it. I'm a human. <laughs> Don't eat me. I'm human. Man, your husband would crush at this. I know. Tim would be, you know, Tim probably soft would be able I'm to human. get through a bear experience with a grizzly. Yeah, Can I you carry your horn as well, one of those air horns? I just those imagine those you being like disemboweled on the ground like, I'm human. <laughs> I'm human. You're going to be really embarrassed when this is over because <laughs> I'm a is? human. I think they do sell those things, like bear horns or something. Yeah, you get the horn as well. Because I've, I've seen, I saw a video clip of a group that was out hunting, I guess, and the bear started charging, and some guy, last second, pulled out the horn, and it worked. And it it says, off. scared him off. If yeah. the animal makes contact with you, I love how subtle that is. If it makes contact, if yeah. it kicks your ass. That sounds sweet, huh? Mm -hmm. It make says, uh, curl into a ball on your side or lie flat on your stomach. Try not to panic. Remain as quiet as possible until the attack ends. While in bear country, be aware that you may encounter a bear at any time. Hmm. Be sure the bear has completely left the area before getting up to seek help. Hmm. Goodness. Well, they say at Yellowstone, more people have uh, died from drowning uh, and burns, burns after yeah. falling into hot springs. Yeah. Oh, you, that, that's, that's the one. Because you, you've been out there, Rafe? No, I want to go this year. I'm trying to find the, a day. It's incredible. A day and a week that I yeah, can go. Same. Like even even by like Old Faithful, if you're if you're like in the touristy spots. But um, I know a lady's dog jumped in. Yeah, you can. I mean, like a into a oh into a hot God. spring. No, the, a, a someone lot of those... took his emotional support animal, quote unquote, to like the planks over the geyser. Yeah. Where it's like, how hot is that, man? It's hot. Oh, it's they're crazy hot. They and, melt. And, you it's like volcanic, right? Yeah, but they're not all steaming. 
And there's like, there's one like a really special one that I love called Emerald Pool and all these. And they, they where's where's Old Faithful? Is that uh, Old Faithful? Yeah, that's where Old, the dog jumped in. Old Faithful is like the one that goes off every forty three minutes or whatever the heck. Don't it you is. have to walk over platforms? Yeah. So yeah. It, out there, there's like a whole bunch of geyser pools and all these different things, and they're all plank walkways without railings. Some of them have railings, but the longer ones don't. And you're over these things, standing over these pools, and they're gorgeous green pools, and you mm. can see 50 feet down and all this stuff, and they're not exploding, and they're not steaming, and people think uh, they're whatever. You get in there, and A, they could just melt you. Oh, or, jeez. Or B, there's like uh, all sorts of stuff that's, that's being, Sulfur. Yeah, that's being given of off that's going to like suffocate you. Oh, yeah. man. And what's that's wild what is you can see through whenever you're out there, because that ground is can be very soft, so that's why they built the... Those planks and everything, but you'll see where bison have walked through, and I'm like, how the heck did they not fall in? This That's is why incredible. I stay home. Dude, it's one of the most this is why I'm staying home. spectacular places on the planet, and <laughs> I like it's the right mud, here in our country. Those mud pits where this, they bubble up. This lady's dog saw the water, jumped in, and basically got boiled. Oh, my like God. in front of all these tourists. Oh. It was terrible. Oh, my God. It was terrible. Were there kids there? I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I assume so. Oh. Yeah, I mean, it's, I'm assuming... Like, I want to go to all these national parks and have the experience. I mean, I love nature, but I just, I, like, I went to, my sister lives in Boulder, and she, yeah, I went out there to visit her last September, and she's wanting to go hiking, and, like, she's she goes every day, pretty much, and she's completely well-versed in the Colorado lifestyle now. And I'm like, we're not going down that trail. Like, I literally have stopped. Like, there's danger have, around every corner. I have bare ESP, and there's one in this woods. <laughs> So I'm like a total pansy about like going down a trail, getting mauled by I a bear. I find that you can't carry bear mace in in the national parks in Yosemite. Oh Why? man, yeah. Well, a uh, I think there's only like a thousand. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I think there's only like a thousand grizzly bears in the lower 48. There's not many. There's there's not many. So your chances of encountering these things is pretty low. And then it's all that like, to the woman who was oh, exsanguinated. Okay. okay, but I'm just saying, like, in your chances are encounter of encountering one that could attack you are even lower because usually it's mama bears thinking that you're messing with their cubs. So, I've seen grizzlies in Yellowstone, and there was there was a distance, and it had no interest in me or any of the other people that were gawking at it. But I don't think there's a lot of bears. I mean, yeah. You're going to encounter them here and there. We're going to see these stories because they're freaking exceptional stories. But it I've also, been a lot of places for a long... They say there's maybe a thousand bears, grizzlies, in Yellowstone. Yeah. Well, and there's good news. You can have bear spray in Yellowstone. Oh, good. Yeah. That's good. Yosemite, you can't. In Yosemite, it says 300 to 500 black bears live in Yosemite. There are no longer grizzly bears in California. So, smaller bears. That's probably why you can't have it in Yosemite. The, it's black bears tend to be a little smaller, and, mm. you, and I think they're not as aggressive. Wow. I could be wrong. We saw one when we were there, very close. Well, sweet. Because they come down, a lot of these mountain climbers that do um, El Capitan, they have a little base there. It's like base three, and the bears have learned oh. because a lot of the climbers are gone, and they camp there and, like, come check for food. Food. Ah. They come down, and so they're around that on. area. So you see them a lot there, but they're, like, Weirdly socialized. They don't really mess with people. They just kind of come down, get the food, and, and bone out. But we saw one in the creek. I think I've told this story before here, but like I saw one in the creek, probably like 50 yards. Oof. Way too close. It, 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 it was like a, it was big, but it wasn't like, whoa, that thing is enormous. Like it was a black bear. I mean, it was probably, if I got closer to it, I'm going to be like, oh, it's pretty big. But, you know, it looked like a big dog. It didn't look like something that I was like, that looks like a prehistoric beast. Mm. We got to yeah. get out of here. Dude, when I went to Yosemite, we were staying in a yurt, you know, like one of the tents in the woods. And yeah. uh, these guys called me bear food for, I don't know, four months. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, oh, he's going to Yosemite. He's staying in a Just tent. Just to make you feel idiot. good. That's, a, that's well, what we do. That's when I told you the guy. It was like in a dry creek bed from like where Yosemite Falls fell. Yeah. And we were hiking up to the falls. Man, that's cool. And... It went one any part of it was moving away from the people, but then like one dumb guy like climbs over the railing and starts like chasing, going into the woods after the bear with his phone and like flip flops or Crocs or something. I don't remember what he had on, we'll but Crocs, they weren't fine. good footwear to run from a bear in a creek bed. I can tell you that. Mm. And I was like, man, if you get attacked, you kind of had it coming, man. Like, well, you're following a, a bear that's. Trying to like mind its own business and go through the woods, and you're like making a beeline for it. What was that? Uh, that guy, Grizzly Man. Oh yeah. Oh, he talking about uh, Timothy Tr Treadwell. Yeah, dude. 
Have you, heard, have have you heard the story of Grizzly Man? That movie is no. so... Dude, you got to see that movie. You got to see that. It's movie. a guy. It's was it a last spoiler game? alert? It ends it? in insanguination. Oh yeah. God! Oh yeah, worse. Grizzly than that. Man. Grizzly Man. It's a movie he, made by a uh, uh, Werner Herzog, I believe. Right. Uh, I thought it was his own footage. Right. Well, it's, it, and he's it out is, there with the bears. Oh, it's his movie. Him and his girlfriend. And Werner he died. Herzog didn't make it. He got the girl. Uh, who made? Who, who made it? He, Werner Herzog. I remember he hearing it. about oh, okay. this guy. He goes into the woods. This guy. He never comes out. Said he was friends with grizzlies. Yeah, and he was until they weren't. Until, yeah, until until he, <laughs> he was, until yeah. they turned on him. Hey, we've all had a fight with our friends. Now remember, you know? he would go up into it like grizzly territory. This is like where they are, right? And he was there during seasons where no humans are supposed to be like there. So migration he was, so he was periods. Like yeah, he, he would was, go into their paths. He was breaking all the rules. He was breaking all the laws. And he was doing it to like raise this and raise that. And he was filming it, and it's incredible, incredible footage. And this dude was wild, wild. And for all you know, I mean. I hate to defend the guy, but like, you know, he was he was pretty educated, pretty pretty involved. But again, breaking all the rules and was it got he him killed. Okay, he knew about bears, but not that they would kill him eventually. No, but the, the, dude, the wild part is. But we're friends. I'll be fully honest. I was uh, I was intoxicated the first time I watched this thing, and I didn't know what I was getting into. And there's one part where he's like. And he's got this really soft, awesome voice. And he talks to the bears like this. I love you. I love you. And he's doing that. And then at one point, he's on the beach. And he's, like, filming some stuff. And he's talking about bears. And then he starts going at the rangers. And he's, like, screaming at the camera about the rangers. And, dudes, I thought he was screaming at me. And I forever <laughs> thought this guy hated oh, yeah. me. He was, I, like, I was, like, him lost in this film. Him, <laughs> and he'd set up his tent and sleep amongst the bears. Right. So yeah, Did dude. his girlfriend die, too? Yeah, she was killed. Damn. They were both... They, uh, spoiler alert! They were both completely eaten, and they exsanguinated. No, eaten like they were torn apart and swallowed. So somebody oh. found this footage. Yes, dude. Here's the they thing. Found his footage. They were, yeah, they were in the uh, they were in the tent. So he did this for a number of years, every summer or every whatever. It's like a burrito season. for uh, for a bear. And dude, oh, when he was there the last yeah. time, he was in a tent with his gal, and they um, got woken up by this attack, and he turned the camera on. So while she, while he was defending the gal being killed, he turned the camera on. Now, the lens cap stayed on, but there is the sound of it. Oh, my God. They, I don't think they play that. They do not play the sound. What they, what they do play is they play Warner Herzog hearing the sound and reacting to it. it, it, it but oh. if you stay after the credits, they have hilarious outtakes, and it's in that part. But the uh, the great song from that is Coyotes from Don Edwards. You got to check that out. Yeah, it's it is a good it is a good song. movie. It's I mean it's yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a good it's a, movie. It's a good movie. Um, I follow like a bunch Terrible of animal ending. feeds and TikTok, and so like there's a bunch of people that have like raised bears since they were cubs, and actually like there was that guy that had the bear in his wedding a few years ago. You ever see that where he like actually had a <laughs> yeah. grizzly bear stand up there and be the best man in his wedding, like uh, bow tie and all, which is bizarre. So I follow a lot of people that like deal with tigers or lions and and bears oh my and like they have befriended but they've raised them so they've been around people like their whole lives yeah. i don't know if that makes a difference or not but they seem like oh i love the youtube footage of it's usually like a circus somewhere in russia yeah. <laughs> right, right. right. And, it, bear turns on. and the bear, the bear turns on the uh yeah the the ringmaster oh, i, haven't seen I don't that. know if you see a bear on a bicycle riding a bike that's that'll, thing. Thing. that'll melt your heart Love it, but that's the thing with all those types of animals, dude. It's always a problem, not a problem till it is. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. same thing with chimpanzees. You're like, my chimpanzee, I raised him since he was a baby. He did tear my face's friend and genitals off yeah. uh, because she came by at a weird time. Then I'm like, yeah. That's, uh, so it became a problem. Right. Yeah. Honestly, I'm more oh, afraid yes, of Oh, yes, that actually happened. I'm more afraid of pet chimpanzees than I am of yeah, uh, dude, pet just, bears. Anything that's I, here's supposed good, to be wild. Here's a good general rule for me. This is my rule. You don't have to impose it in your life. I don't have a pet that is capable of murdering me at its will. That is a good general it's rule. It's a very good rule. To be like, I don't have a dog big enough that it could destroy me without me being able to <laughs> defend myself. And I don't I don't have a 20-foot boa constrictor in my house. I saw a video the other day, dude, and it was just same thing. It was cute enough, I guess, but it was like snake people, and they have their four-year-old, three-year-old, 15-foot boa constrictors and 
python ball pythons and she's like lounging around the snakes she's like laying on the snake watching blues clues <laughs> the snakes like all wrapped around her she got one foot up on the snake and the snakes like right by her face and like she's petting the snake's head too hard like a little kid does and they're like oh she's these snakes love her they've been raised together they're socialized and i'm like yeah still an animal yeah you we'll see <laughs> Till she hits that snake a little too hard one time or, that thing or surprises racks. it. Yeah, that gets, thing coils around her. Gets a fang in her forehead. Uh, yeah, what was it? Remember the chimpanzee? And how long ago was that when it ripped a woman's face off? The neighbor, well, she was on Oprah, remember? So it's got to be a long time, 20, 25 years? 20, 25 years? It was years. that long ago? Uh, wasn't it? You, are you talking about the gal that, that came out and, uh, and and revealed herself? You know, she wore the, the sheet over her face? Yeah. Yeah, that, that was, was that, that long was like, ago. I want to say she came out after everything had settled. Didn't it rip Oprah. her hands off? Yeah, that's what chimpanzees do is they go for the face they, and hands. Yeah, they go for your hands and face. And this was her neighbors who had, I think, got out before and done, some, done something and then boom. Oh, it was like a friendly, oh, yeah, the was chimp like, oh, is yeah, it's, it's Jimmy the chimp. Jimmy the chimp. and Friend to all. Yep. Who Until knows? she ripped the neighbor's face off. Literally ripped the woman's face and, and hands off. 2009. Yeah. 2009, oh, that, wow, that, yeah. I felt like it was even longer. Yeah. Was, I think was Rafe, Oprah on? Rafe has a good point. If it can, uh, especially if it can kill a little kid, don't have this, this silly thing. And if a dog is the cheapest one available for adoption, that probably means it's not the best one. So skip the cheap dogs. And it's that one that's outlawed. That is King Scott's opinion, everyone. That is coming from King Scott. Yeah. Direct your emails to for a King Scott, 1057. Yeah. The They're point. terrible Dot creatures. I don't know if this is the, the way to go, but Crystal in the chat says, when it comes to bears, if it's black, you yell back. If it's brown, you lay down. If it's white, good night. Wait, they, say it again? White. If it's black, you yell back. If it's brown, you lay down. If it's white, good night. Because polar yeah, bears, polar bears are yeah, yeah. enormous. I don't, I don't foresee myself ever encountering one of Have those. you ever looked at a graph of all the bear, like with a human, and see the graph of every type of bear that's out there? I mean, it's As insane. far as our size? Yeah, our size yeah, goes. Yeah, we're, we're so screwed as a species. Yeah. If you <laughs> come and got if the bears, bear. Yeah, if the bears all get together and they decide, now nah, we're going to take over. <laughs> wow. We're going to take over. Yep. What else did you learn this, this morning? Oh, what else did I learn? Yeah. I'm glad you asked. I need to get off this subject. I'm freaking out. This <laughs> one has to do with flamingos. Great. And RV parks. Okay. Oh, dude. You know what? So my, my daughter's in the RV and uh, I think she actually t told us what you're about to teach I what, had about to teach no anybody. idea. So if you see a, a pink flamingos at RV parks, huh, swingers are here. That's the new upside down oh, pineapple, huh? Yeah. Now we knew, you know, pineapples, upside down pineapples, that meant swinging. But if you're an RV at an RV park and you see, you know, the plastic mm -hmm. pink flamingos, swingers. Dang. Just at an RV park, not at a house. <clears throat> well, when was the last time you really saw a pink flamingo? Uh, my neighbor and I had one. Scott's house. Yeah, That's my house. Ironically. My neighbor was putting. During the 2020, he wanted some joy in his yard, and so he put some pink flamingos out there. <laughs> and I'd be like, huh. "Hey, I love those things, man." Those, and he gave us one. And so, and we then had, he went wink, wink. And he was like, "How you doing?" Wink, wink. Yeah. I'm an honorary member of a group called the Pink Flamingos, but it was a lesbian uh, retreat that goes on a float trip every year. <laughs> it's a very different <laughs> thing, but it was awesome. I had such a blast with them gals, man. I was out doing a float. They were our camp neighbors. They had all these RVs. They had the Pink Flamingos annual retreat. Save the drama for your mama. Leave your skirts at home. Just a bunch of cool gals going that. on a float trip. Then they did it right, man. They had they, the spread. I was like cooking hot dogs on a stick. I go over there, dude. They got literally, no pun intended, they had a taco bar. And it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> no hot dogs, but tacos. It, it was amazing. Oh, yeah. No, it was like, no hot dogs. The sausages in the vicinity. I know it seems All like I'm tacos. making a joke, but I'm being honest. It was a, it was amazing, dude. They had like oh, no. a, a cold bar of like all, it had like, we're in the middle of the nowhere, dude, in like Steelville, Missouri. And I'm like, oh, dude, they got fresh chopped tomatoes, cilantro. Mm. I'm over oh, here so like a floated, Neanderthal. I'm what, just like. What's that, the Black River over there? Or who's I, Yeah, I think it was a who's or maybe the Black. I can't remember, but I was there with my, a couple of friends, uh, that was great, man. We were going to go floating this weekend. We actually had a float trip planned for Ooh, Saturday. You're kidding. It's too hot. It's going to be too oh, hot. Wow, it's perfect. That's that's, that's why you're on the water. Ah. What are you doing? You wouldn't get a raft. you do like a canoe? No, but do a raft. All right. Now, listen, I know hot is hot. But Saturday wasn't 
terrible, wasn't no, it? No, this Saturday, this coming Saturday, is going to oh. be 100 degrees. Yeah. Today's yeah, but... heat index is not pleasant. We're talking Yeah, maybe if it was last Saturday, fine, but this coming Saturday, the 29th, us and another family, we're going to go floating and uh, looking, at the, looking at the temperature. Now, I know you're in the water. It's the hottest hot. Would you just float? You wouldn't stay? No, it would just be a day trip. Oh. Huh. It yeah. would just be a day trip. It'd be hot. It, it was the consensus of the group, like, ah, you know, it's, it's, it's hot. And it's like kids, too. Like, all our, our kids would be there. They have three kids. We, have, <laughs> we got two kids. Yeah. All of these complaints, mm. probably from all the kids and me. Oh, man, I'd love that. Mm. I'd love that. So my, my, my daughter, my oldest daughter, is super into this RV and thing. And we dropped her off. She, she came in, and there's, like, RV spots around us that I, have no, that I had no idea existed. Like, they're hidden all sorts of throughout St. Louis and oh, St. Yeah. Charles and everything. We dropped her off at this uh, RV park, and man, dude, just doing the circle around and seeing how people are living in these RV lives are awesome. There was a bus. Well, there was one bus, I guess was on tour, and it's like a cat bus or something, like a cat show, a cat rescue. I, I don't know. It was like 100 cats on this thing. And they said, like, you know, rescuing cats all over the country in these shows. And Dude, them and the buses next to them, which I don't think were associated, they had they brought fences out. I'm, listen, I'm sure it's I'm sure it's great if you if you're into that lifestyle. It's just not for me. I I, I couldn't live in an RV. It just looks so cool because I I toured in a bus basically that life for 10, 15 years. And Never thought about like decking out outside. Mm -hmm. These guys park. They 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 pull. Oh, up, they park. Yeah. They put out their turf. And they, they'll put out like a white picket fence. Yeah, and, they like, got a, fences make for their yard. dogs. Oh yeah. They made a yard. They had like not the flamingos, but they had Christmas lights everywhere. I mean, I was like, oh, oh my god. Awesome. They've, they've, they're living here for months. My buddy put his RV down at Babbler. So there's an RV park down at Babbler. And there's a whole, I mean, there's a lot of them. You could put a lot of them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I went down there to kind of spend the day with them. And, yeah, people put out turf yeah. and fences. It looks cool as hell. And awesome. flamingos. I get it, man. I get so it. So apparently the flamingos, and this was a like a travel reporter for this uh, for this website. Uh, pink flamingos are steep with symbolism, but within the context of RV parks in the U.S., the ornament may be used as a secret symbol for sex. Mm. In a new report for RV travel, so this is a, this is a person who does specific travel reports in the RV world. This woman says she was taken aback when the hidden meaning of the pink birds was revealed to her. Statuettes of the waterfowl are frequently used as lawn decorations at campsites to communicate to fellow campers that you identify as a swinger. Man, all the people that have been doing pink flamingos for 50 years are like, oh, you had to hijack something else. You right, got now, the pineapple, now, now you got the flamingo. Now, now, now I got to take things. that down. Now you got the flamingo. Well, I guess, I mean, I like a code, so I think that's cool. I mean, but then what if, what if you just, like but, me, like you just have a pink flamingo in your RV. Well, you right. are sending the wrong message. Yeah, you got to create a code, man. You can't just, you can't take somebody's code. Right. You yeah, know my, what I'm saying, right? I mean, I feel bad for all the pink flamingoists. I know. My that, sister that don't want to swing. A right. big pink flamingo. Yeah. Like everything in her yard is that, because, I don't know. That's, that's what, what I was that's thinking about this group. These ladies, they've had this moniker for a long time. They're just out there having a good time. Yeah. They don't want to swing. <laughs> Trust me. Well, now, now that lifestyle <laughs> may be thrust upon them. Mm. Well, man, what we need to do is just let's just get real and let's make a line <laughs> of welcome mats that just say DTF. Yeah, just put that out. Swingers welcome, or or put it more blatant. Yeah, D swingers DTS. welcome. D swingers welcome. DTS down to swing. Down to swing. DTS. Yeah, how about a freaking swing? Yeah, yeah, that would be the best symbol. Hello. <laughs> Make it clear to me. Put a little, uh, one, of, one of those, one of those little, uh, not rat of matan, what are they called? The little. You think like, it's like a basket chair swing? Yeah, a little, little basket chair swing. Just <laughs> put a little ornament on the front of your car. It's a little basket chair swing. And I'm like, <laughs> see you at 8 p.m. Uh, according to this uh, writer, uh, the hidden message they harbor is swingers camp here with the flamingos and are used to invite other couples to swap partners or enjoy a casual fling during their stay. The traveler only came to discover this while recently visiting an RV park where she overheard an eyebrow-raising conversation between campers and a staff member on site. The oblivious campsite worker had casually joked with the visitors that they all needed to spruce up their patch were a bunch of flamingos. Mm. Much to her confusion, the couple immediately responded that they, quote, don't do that. But the RV worker eventually caught wind of the true meaning behind the, word, uh, behind the bird. So the the worker was like, ah, you should get a couple flamingos just put around and spruce up the place. And the campers were like, no, 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 we don't do that.
<laughs> oh, so this is a long, like a long-standing code, maybe. I I don't know when they started doing this, but if you are in an RV park and you see pink flamingos. Down, down. Oh, so it's not about homes or anything. Down for no, bus. No, this is specifically still home. This is specifically RV parks. Okay. Down for shaking the bus. Huh? That's wild, man. Hey, give us a call if you uh, if you, uh, if you if you live that life. If you live that life, like RV, pink flamingo. It was really cool, man. I mean, just just doing a couple laps around the uh, the RV park, seeing different people's style and how they're how they're rocking their life. I can I totally understand, and I guarantee you. You, you you probably would never do this, Riz. But I can imagine being empty nest, you know, and maybe you're close to retirement and you're thinking, well, I could sell this house and, like, just get a $100,000 RV and just, like, live it on the road for a long time, save some money, just do, like, see the country. This country freaking rules. No, I, I, I get it. No, it, it sounds very exciting, but uh, I'm sure for a little while I would be all about it. But then I, I want to go home. Wouldn't want to do it long term? But this What's is your long term? Home? Life, bro. This is your home. <laughs> so, so, you don't this like Ari- you don't like Arizona in the summer? No, well, go I north. Don't. Oh, I don't like the I, north. I'm not gonna live in Arizona. I'll go south. Come on, it's dry man. heat. <laughs> uh, in this article, they go on to explain: yes, the pineapple, uh, the pineapple is common with the uh, swinging community. Sometimes a visitor leaves a sticker outside their door to signal to passersby that uh, passersby that they're open to receiving a guest. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I told you guys my neighbor hung pineapple like Christmas lights on the porch because she thought they were cute. Yeah, don't mean that. And I had to tell her. I was like, "Don't be surprised <laughs> if you get a, you knock get a couple the door. knocks." <laughs> my entire house was decorated in pineapples when we bought it, uh-huh. and I didn't know. Yeah, but is that what they were into? Or you, a, did, like, did you know the previous owners? I don't know. Sex den. No, I didn't. But but some people say that it has to be an upside down pineapple. Upside down. Yes. But I'm talking about like my lighting fixtures, everything in the kitchen. All pineapples. The, ba- the, the back ba- porch. Yeah, the back everything. porch. Everything was pineapples everywhere. You moved into a bang pad, dude. I mm-hmm. guess so. Yeah, yeah. Good yeah. energy in there. I had to clean the carpets. That's mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good steam. <laughs> Get them out of here. Gleaming hardwood <laughs> floors. I found a funny story. Speaking of uh, swinging open marriages, so. Uh, so a woman on Reddit, she uh, and and I want you to know, I, I want you to kind of think as I'm telling the story how this is going to go. So a woman on, on on Reddit shares a story of her husband asking her just out of the blue, "Hey, what do you think about an open marriage?" She explains that she and her husband have great sex. Uh, they have a lot in common. They have two beautiful kids, big home. They got good jobs. So she thought the marriage was was going great until the husband out of nowhere. Said, hey, what if we try like an open marriage? Hmm. And she wrote last week. He told me they wanted to. He wanted to ask me something that I mustn't take it the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah. He wanted to open the marriage. She starts crying. <laughs> Did he not love me anymore? Is he not attracted to me? Is he cheating? Why not divorce me then? His answer was no, 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 no. He said it's it's not about love or happiness. I just want to try something new and exciting. Mm. Yeah. That's his rationale. She says she was distraught. Pickleball. She she was distraught. And then later that evening, she's like, you know what? I'm going to download Tinder. And this is the woman. The woman's like, you know what? If he wants this, I'm going to download Tinder. Okay. Is he already on it? She uploaded, she says, one of her least flattering pictures. She wrote that I'm a mother of two. I'm in an open marriage. And she actually showed her husband in the profile. Mm -hmm. She says, not long after activating the profile, men started swiping, swiping. After an hour, she got 100 matches. The next day, it was 2,000 matches. Goodness. And I guess her husband did the Tinder thing. No matches. (laughs) (laughs) It's a harder sell, dude. How do we feel now? You get caught up in the backfire. I just had this conversation with a friend, and they opened up their relationship, and seemed like she was wanting it more than he was, and I was like, he seemed like he was doing it for her a little mm-hmm. bit, and I'm like, ah, mm-hmm. it's a harder sell for you, man. And he goes, yeah, I know. He's like, because they're 40, you know, and I'm like, 40-year-old guy, go to work, you tell your female coworkers, like, hey, just in case you were wondering... Me and my wife opened it up this weekend. <laughs> yeah. 
creep. <laughs> HR yeah, well, you, is expect, you expect every woman to throw her panties at you, right? Yeah, but if when she does, dudes are just that low low stakes, low commitment is just way more uh, way more our speed. I think guy speed in well, general. It's it's the it's the overconfidence of guys. Like, hey man, if I was single, who man? Yeah, I'd be swatting them. They'd be lining. I'd be yeah. swatting them, swatting yeah. them off like flies. She got within. 12 hours, mm -hmm. 2,000 likes. He got zero. Yeah. Wow. Dang. Zero. I wonder if that changed her idea, though, about it. Like, she's like, oh, okay. I can have fun, too. Well, the husband was pissed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, what is he? Oh. That's no, wrong. honey. Not dudes. <laughs> they mean dudes. dudes. <laughs> yeah, that's cheating. She it's showed dudes. the husband, like, hey, look, I got 2,000 likes. How many did you get? He got, she says he got pissed, demanded she delete the app. He, he got to the point uh, where it's like, forget, forget about it. Forget about this open marriage thing. Yeah. Forget about it. This is the wrong interview. This isn't fun or exciting. <laughs> and now she says now he's back to quote unquote normal. But she's like, no, man, this is yeah. you. Open Pandora's box. You yeah, know? you cross this bridge. So I bet you if he's if he's out of nowhere, you said they've been together for a long time. Been together a long time. She said she thought they had a, a, a great marriage. You know, two kids, big home, great jobs. I'm assuming they're in their 40s. Man, see that that's the scenario where if I were her and he said that I'd go, "Oh, cool. What's what's her name?" Mm. Like who who is it that you have in mind here? Cuz that doesn't just come out of nowhere. You think he's like benching somebody? Uh, yeah, or uh, or, or, already, or already already, already done it somebody. or already set it up like that's how people get out of like ha having any sort of like a, uh, you know, moral responsibility on themselves. They're like, "Oh, they line it up and they go, "Oh, I'll just say this and then and then it'll be okay. And then it'll be okay because I said that, you know, we should do an open marriage. And, then, oh, it just happened right. two hours later. I More than ever, people are in open. Well, I would kind of agree with that, though. Marriages. What do you mean? Just what you I don't think that, like, if, you want, if you're wanting to, if you have not acted on anything and you've brought it to your spouse, I don't think you've done anything wrong at that point. I'm saying you, you've you, already, you've so set you've it up. already acted on it. Oh, and then you're trying to be like... And then he's saying you're already... Oh, you're, you're trying to retcon. Uh, you're already yeah, doing yeah, yeah. it. You're already doing it. I'm saying the setup... You're already doing it. The setup is the act upon if the end is the act upon. You know what I'm saying? I didn't make well, maybe that's the me. first... No. Like, if somebody is... You're in a marriage, and then you start to kind of have a wandering eye or connect with somebody else, and then you think that there's the possibility that you would want to pursue that, but you also want to be in your marriage, like... But no line has been crossed, like a mental line, I guess, but like... You know, at least coming to your husband and saying, like, or whoever, and saying, what do you think about an open relationship before you actually do something? Because I feel like you yourself are getting open to it first, and then mm -hmm. you're thinking, oh, I want to open this up, possibly. I mean, I have so many friends that are in open relationships. Yeah, so many friends? Like, so how many? many? friends. Are they married, or is it um, boyfriend and girlfriend situation? So I have two that are married. And I have one in a committed relationship, and I have one who is... So you know four couples that are in open... I know zero. That's as crazy. Would you mind writing their names down on a piece of paper? As far as I know, no. I know zero. And I'm so interested when we talk about this because... Um, Tweet that out on our socials. <laughs> I, so, because I never in my life have I ever had th this before. It's literally in the last year. And yeah. I really do think the pandemic had something to do with this. Like, it just kind of switched people. But... Um, I think there's ever been a better time if you are somebody who wants to pursue that to be able to talk about it. Because, like, as we, Tim and I learned about our friends that had this going on, the topic came up, and I go, I mean, I, I'm like, would we want to ever do this? Like, not saying I want to do it, but I just, I wanted to get the feel back of what, oh, where he God. was with it. And we were I, both like, no, for If us. I ever even brought that up, I would be hospitalized. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, and, I, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying thoughts. I'm not saying you have hey, thoughts. Hey, Riz is an ICU. <laughs> I'm what happened? Like you said he it brought up. up a threesome to his wife again. <laughs> <laughs> he told him not to. He's in critical condition. No, there's no way. Yeah, no way. Bringing a, another partner in that doesn't work. What were it you works. It works on you, porn. Uh, I think it depends on the people, but yeah. <sighs> I was gonna say I'm, I'm not. I'm not talking about just like thoughts, and then you're like, oh, you know, let's explore this, and then you have the conversation. I'm saying like you make moves, and you yeah, do, yeah. you're basically holding hands over the fence, right? And then you open the gate, and oh, by the way, when you tell somebody, hey, maybe maybe we should consider an open open marriage. What you're, if you, you're, you're not also telling them that, like, hey, basically, I've already set up this entire thing with this person. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Like, that's oh, that's what that it up. sounds you like this guy has take done. That back ever. But what if you do oh, say that, though? What if you are like, if everything is totally hey, this open, person has showed interest, 
I would never do this without your permission. I would like you to be part of it. Man. But if you Ooh, shut it down, boy. we shut it down right that now together. That is a risk-reward yeah. thing. Open honesty? I, th I, th I, I don't know. I feel like I could have that conversation with Tina. I'd be fine. Do you have unconditional love in your marriages? I, this topic came up yesterday on TikTok. Um, somebody was talking about... The, they have their grandparents, you know, made it 70 years into their marriage and the grandchild asked the grandma, you know, what was the key to your lifelong love? And the grandma said, unconditional love for your partner. And I was thinking, we don't really go into marriage. You don't hear the term unconditional love for a spouse you all, or a partner. You always hear it for your children or yeah. an animal gives you unconditional love. I would like to say there is, but... <laughs> but. But there's not, right? Like, so of course, there's not. I mean, there's, there are certain lines that, if I, you know, bro, unconditional there's... love. If I cross a line, it... but but bro, let... there's lines in your vows that are conditions. That's what you're saying when you stand up there, like forsaking all others, condition. Yeah, uh, sickness and health, condition. condition. But for better or worse. So this well, that's you could have that's a, bad... a pretty big umbrella. It's a nice clause. <laughs> but that's it made me as, think. I as go... close as one can do. I yeah. do feel like I have that. Do you? Because that's how I love. It's how I've always loved. That's wonderful. Oh. I think that's really wonderful. <laughs> I do. I mean, and, I... well, it's been there's moon and been, fantasy land. It's been tremendously <laughs> painful for me to love like, like that. Yeah. But that's but that's, that's how that's I me. love. I'm just saying that's 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 it's been horribly Beautiful. heartbreaking for me to be to be that way. But that's that's how I am. But is that because like I mean we're all you guys are laughing because. There are conditions you're saying. Of but, course there But are. this old lady said that she literally made it to 70 years or whatever because she unconditionally, not saying her husband didn't make mistakes. Because she never found out, you know, grandpa went on a bachelor party and banged 30 hookers. No, but maybe he did, but she still <laughs> loved him. And did she, she never found out. She found out. I wonder if she found out that, if it <laughs> was still un it. unconditional <laughs> she love. She found out. <laughs> anyway, I thought that was an interesting I feel thing. that way. I think that's a I think that's a great take because I think people right now think that they deserve to be happy at all times. So as soon as they're unhappy, they're like, "Well, I need to change this." Well, of course, you know, I'm people, out of here because I'm unhappy. People in the moment. bail out, you know, maybe bail out too soon. But yeah. there are, I mean, listen, there are lines that oh, if they're crossed, sure, you, you can never sure. work a turn. Like for instance, yeah, okay, if, if your if your wife cheated on you, is that like I'm divorced? And I think it would go both ways. Okay, that's all right. And I think it would, it would, uh, you know what? I don't think I know it would go. That would be it. That would be it. You that would be up, it for her. Would that it. would probably be it for me. Okay. What if, what if uh, your wife kissed somebody on the lips? Like at a work event. Kiss? Like, <laughs> like, like, he's going to paint this. Like, kiss, you know, like, a, like, let's say, let's say a man. Like, let's say it was, uh, we were at a Cardinals game. And everybody was drinking, and uh, it was a couple months ago. And, and uh, it was a double header. Yeah. Like, let's say. You went to the bathroom, and you were gone a little too long. And, um, a close friend of, the, of you guys kisses your wife, and is like, I have feelings for you, and kisses her, and, and she. Whoa. Accepts oh, the kiss. She feelings. accepts the kiss. Like accepts like oh, and but then says like I'm. We can't be doing this. Like what about that? I mean, I don't think I'm pulling the trigger on the marriage because of a kiss. Um, but I mean, there'd be some serious discussions about what, right. you know, what went on there. You definitely wouldn't be in trouble for a long time. <laughs> what if you? <laughs> yeah. I'm breaking down. God, oh, guess God. what? God. Shoes on in the house from that point forward. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing New shoes rules. in the basement. <laughs> And I'm, eating, and I'm eating in bed. Every room in the house, I got boots on. <laughs> what if you find out that your wife has been messaging with somebody that you don't know, she's never talked about before? Emotional. And she never acted upon it? Emotional well, no, relationship. She, it, she's already acted upon it. Emotional no, relationship. No, I mean, acting physically. On it. She's, no, no, no. She's connecting with this man who she, you know, knows for the last year, but hasn't really mentioned him. I honestly think then that that would be what has caused you to look outside the marriage for emotional support. Mm. Like, that's the honest answer. Interesting. And there would be unconditional love met with that, then you're saying. Like, you'd, well, you'd also, want to I mean, also like the physical part, too. Like, why? We, what has caused you to look outside this marriage for physical <clears throat> and emotional right. needs that, that I guess I'm not providing? Okay. I like you. Honestly, case. it was Chris Hemsworth. Damn. Oh, Dang well, it. He is yeah. handsome. I, God, could you imagine? Now I'm in the Flamingo <laughs> Club. Yeah, you always, you always like, and there's one in our you room. always, uh, you know, you, oh, who's your free pass? Right. Yeah. It's all, all fun that. to fantasize about. It's like looking through Zillow, like looking at mansions. Yes. Wouldn't it be fun to live who's in this mansion? Yeah. Who's the dude? Is Jerry Cantrell, Alice in Chains? Yes. yes. Tina's an Alice in Chains fan, went to Alice in Chains concert, went backstage, <laughs> called me, and was like, hey, 
<laughs> if I can bang Jerry Cantrell tonight, are you cool with it? And I was like, this seems very specific if question you, you're asking. <laughs> you know, I, um, and she goes, I just want to know. Can you get me a guitar pick? She's like, I just want to know. And I was like, yeah, I guess. Whatever. Really? Because what are the odds of Tina banging Jerry Cantrell? I mean, she was meeting him in person. And okay, just because I mean, you meet Jerry she's Cantrell. She's a charmer, mean, though. I I'm just saying, a like, you, it was a more just, realistic yeah. thing than just being like, if I meet Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. You know what I mean? Like, if I was at a dinner with Justin Trudeau, the chances went up a little, you know? But I was like, uh, yeah, go for it. You they know, went whatever. from, you know, they went from one in a million to one in 500,000. You're right. But the point was is... Everybody's uh, attainable. You never know. You never you never know. But she called ahead of time. You know, it was more of like, I've had a schoolgirl crush on him since. And I'm like, yeah, if, the, uh, if that one in 500,000 opportunity... <laughs> And Jerry Cantrell's like, hey, who's this loud girl that talks like a truck driver? I want to bang her. <laughs> then I'm like, yeah, go. Go for it. You don't think that would change your relationship in any way? I don't know, man. I Maybe. I'm not a super what? jealous guy. When so she it's came like, home that night after <laughs> banging Jerry Cantrell and hopped in the shower. Yeah. And she's thinking, and she's I'm glowing. the glowing. man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> she needs to come snub my rooster. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Is that a song? Rooster. Rooster. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Um, so <laughs> she comes manner. home. Not all gold, yes, guys. Yes, sorry. So <laughs> she comes home after banging Jerry Cantrell. What's the, I mean, she walks through the door, exhausted. She goes, I gotta get in the shower. Are you gonna ask, how was it? Yes. What? I'm sorry. I, this is just who I am. I, yeah, I don't know. I wanna know. I think this is the wrong band because I just looked at their, uh, some of their big hits Man in the Box, <laughs> Down in a Hole, mm -hmm. Them Bones, No Excuses, Nutshell. Like, yeah, I don't know. I think yeah. I'd skip that one. <laughs> Sounds like they've what been doing this a while. What a perverted band. Yeah. <laughs> and it would, question mark? Hmm. Great song. Well, yeah, I what do you do, man? You can never listen to that band again. I'm not a huge Alice in Chains fan. <laughs> so, yeah, so, <laughs> I'm just saying. Not a big loss for me. Man. I don't know. I mean, if Tim got to, like, his, his go-to hall pass is, like, Rachel McAdams. He just finds her so incredibly gorgeous. If he had the chance to bang Rachel McAdams... I mean, I would, I would be similar. I'd be like, go for it. I my don't friend. believe you. I, I don't believe. I would be you. hurting, I but I would also be excited you. for him. There's dualities oh, in life. I don't believe. You. I would be it's excited nice to and say also I don't believe it for a second. Well, I don't know, man. I'm just telling you. Let's set it up. Hey, it's, it's just <laughs> set it up. I mean, this is a bucket list. I mean, it is realistic. It's, it's. I'm not saying it's uh, reasonably probable, but I mean, it's possible. Mm-hmm. Are you being serious when you say, like, you'd be okay with it? I would be like, if, if it wasn't going to no. go into a relationship. How is it different? Get the fuck how, out of here. how is she different <laughs> than somebody that just parked in the parking lot I'm right here? I'm a commoner and she's not. And so what? I look at oh, that like no, a... No, uh, I look at her and go... No. <laughs> no. It's Jerry Cantrell. It's the same thing. I no. Think I'd be, like, sort of happy for him. You're no commoner, first of all. I mean, well, would you rather... Have you read People magazine? There's a whole section that's... They're, they're just, just like, like us. us. <laughs> well... You make a good point. I don't know. I mean, because I guess you treat people how you want to be treated. And if I had the opportunity... So she could say other people's words good. Dude. And she's pretty. Let's not get all up on Rachel May. She's a fantastic person, I believe. Like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm you happy. know it, nothing Rachel, about her. You, you know nothing about her. Down. You yeah. know no, nothing no, not, about I wanna, her. I love her. I we're love not her. chipping anybody down, but yeah. we're making sure that you realize that you are right up here, and well, that's your husband. I know. No, of, you're worth. Of which you're and not I, okay. But I love him, and so I'm like, oh man, this is his dream girl, and he again, one in five hundred thousand chance to do that. You're I out of your mind. I want to do that for him. <laughs> I don't know. I you see just got that. Are you out of your mind? Think about it like this: Would you rather your wife bang Jerry Cantrell or Doug from the HOA? There you go. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I'd much me, rather. It's no difference. Okay, that's, interesting. that's okay. No difference because you can. Have okay, that you get a story with Jerry Cantrell. You get a different story with Doug, uh, who's part of the HOA. Well, now, so now, I mean, you've, you've kind of already got like an inferior uh, inferiority thing with with Rachel McAdams. Let's say this happens. Let's play this scenario out for thirty seconds. So let let's say it happens. What about the next time that y'all are like together? All mm -hmm. you're thinking about is Rachel McAdams. And what if the notebook How can comes I on compete TBS? with Rachel McAdams? How Great was movie. it? How was it? Like you're gonna ask that question fifty five times. Yeah, in my fantasy land that I'm living in right now, that I know you guys don't want to be in. I'm okay with it, and I'm happy, and I'm also probably a little heartbroken, but also how crazy is it that Tim got to bang his dream girl? 
And you wouldn't be resentful to as long, Tim? As long as he treated me how I'm treating him. And you wouldn't said, be resentful for Tim, oh, as long who as is now okay. acting out his fantasy with no regard for your emotional well-being no, and he, your heartbreak. Whoa. He does have, you're jumping to conclusions. Of course, Tim is going to have regard for that. He's not going to marry and run off with Rachel McAdams. This is a one-night experience. But still, though, knowing that he's doing permission that. permission ahead of time. Yeah, yeah but no, even, like, guess permission for anything. And you get a yes. Hey, man. As long as he meets me with respect and honesty and then also says, hey, if you if ever get he, the chance to whoever my guy. If he upon it, he's got no respect Who's your dude? I'm sorry. Who's my dude? Who's your dude? It Just, changes like every week. Well, Who is it this week? Let's say it's, uh, uh, let's say it's Tom Justin Hardy this Let's week. say it's Tom Hardy. That's a good one. Okay, okay. I bet you the day after this all happens with Rachel, your attempts for Tom Hardy are going to up. Yeah, up, up, Absolutely. Up, up, I'm buying the meet and greet uh, to whatever DMs. movie sure. is coming out. You've <laughs> right. said yes. You've said yes. And poor Tim, we're using him in this scenario. Tim is in hell. All Tim right. is not. Love you, Timmy. <laughs> Love you, Tim. I know he will never do this. <laughs> Every morning he has to but hear about. Even though... Love you, Tim. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, we'll put myself in this situation. <laughs> okay. We'll put myself in this situation. My dream. Uh, Who's your dream? Mar let's Brigitte say, Nielsen. Brigitte Nielsen. <laughs> what? Who's my no, no, <laughs> no. It used to be uh, she was uh, Kate, super high. Kate uh, Upton. Oh, okay, that was a, that was a long crush ago. I was. A long oh, time I'm ago. sorry. I We've moved on. Let's say uh, Gal Gadot. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Good one. Wonder Woman. Let's go. Wonder wow. Woman. What a departure. I have an opportunity. Yes. To get with Wonder Woman. Yes. Gorgeous. I mean. One night only. One night only. She goes. I'm going to be at the Four Seasons downtown. Mm, great Imagine. Idea. Here's my room number. Oh, my it's God. A nice place. Good reference. Thank you. I'm, here's my room number. I'm, yes. I, I'm, I'll be ready at 8 o'clock sharp. Fantasy out the wazoo. I go to my wife. I go, hey, it's an opportunity for me. <laughs> <laughs> an opp <laughs> Are you talking about really, the opportunity? Really, it's an opportunity for us. <laughs> <laughs> right. She's got to frame it um, the right way. And she says... Sure, go for it. I would know that there's a little piece of her that would be so upset, yes. even though she outwardly said, "Go, go." And it's yeah. my dream, it's my fantasy. Yeah, I have the opportunity, even though there's a little part of her that would be that would kill her. Mm -hmm. I would not do it. Well, it's very Just sweet. even if it was out of a hundred percent of her heart, point one percent would be like would die because I did that. Mm -hmm. No way. Not all worth right. It. I love that. Wow. Not what you you're are. a very sweet, sweet guy. I didn't realize that would be what you're talking about on the air today, and I'm impressed. Thanks for bringing it, Adam. And you know what? <laughs> <laughs> you're a slam dunk for tonight, dude. Yeah. Yeah. When she heard that Ooh. just now. Slam dunk. Ooh, Joey, pull the yeah. clip. <laughs> Joey, pull the clip. Pull dude. that clip and send it to my wife. Pull the clip, send it to Riz's wife. <laughs> All right, great. Oh, man. Oh, that's great. That's her one romance thing for the year. Well, I'll be in your hotel room at 8 p.m. <laughs> to meet Gal Gadot yeah, and Tim be like, too. hey, Riz is a really good guy. <laughs> Riz is not going to make it. What do you think of this? Well, I got to shake his You're in a kimono. Hell. You're in a kimono <laughs> and, and, a, and, a, and a commander hat. I'm in a kimono holding a bottle of Cuvassier. Mm, 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 mm. That's great. The risk reward <laughs> thing is for, for, for me, it's like, okay, for would be probably 30 seconds of pleasure with Gal Gadot. Is it Gadot or Godot? I don't know. Who I knows? think it's Gadot. I don't even know how to say her name, but we're in the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're there. For probably what would last 30 seconds. No foreplay, just right to it. Just right, right to, to it. it. Well, that's You're nice. like Paul Rudd in Wonderlust. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks. And that's generous, by the way. Probably for 10 seconds of pure joy. Isn't there a movie about this? Hall Pass? You'd make it yeah. one sentence. Yeah. You're like, I can't believe I'm sleeping with Gal Gadot. Oh, I'm done. All right. Get, uh, the, get the crowd. Ow! I'll see you. <laughs> All right. I got to yeah. go. Oh! <laughs> Dude. Your wife's going to drop you off and be like, I'll be back in an hour. You go, no, no, no. no, no you no, can no, just wait right just here. Just keep right the car running. Yeah, you don't even need to park. Yeah, right. Don't pay for parking. We'll be good. You can stay in the fire lane. <laughs> 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 well, your original question, though, was... Would you drop him off? I'm sorry, Rafe. Oh, would no. You, where, no, <laughs> this I'm not going to chauffeur him to the dream. <laughs> this is far more important. I'm not going to chauffeur him to the dream. He can get there himself. You wouldn't? No, that's the line. I You have to do it your own that's way. A, that's that's line. Line. my line. I'm not driving you. Go live your dreams. You can do I it, but you, you have to Uber. <laughs> you got to Uber that. Dude, cool. What would you I would do? Uber to L.A. So, you know... That Tim is out. <laughs> oh, I'm drinking. Doing, who is this dream girl? Uh, Rachel McAdams. Joy Rachel Behar. McAdams. Oh. Joy Behar. Weak. No. <laughs> <laughs> 
You know that he's doing his thing. Yes. What are you doing? I'm drinking. You're not hanging with the girls? I'm probably calling my best friend and being like, and we would probably just commiserate about it. She would but also see, be involved. But see, for even him, wouldn't you? But for him, even though you said yes, you'd be commiserating. See? But I wouldn't be for like the rest of my life. I'd be like, oh, this oh, is I awkward. Uh... <laughs> this is awkward right now. He's banging Rachel McAdams. At the Four Seasons, because that's, I guess, where everybody goes. There goes the notebook. Either that or the Ritz. Now you can't watch the goddamn notebook Either that or the Ritz. <clears throat> yeah. Well. There well, goes the last season hey, of Dave. That's true. I'm telling you, for, that for this guy, for this guy in the story who now regrets suggesting an open marriage because his wife received 2,000 Tinder matches in less than 12 hours, and he got zero. Yeah. I think that's different than the dream person. I'm sorry. Like, I just think of it's There's a... Top brass of who you can be doing, and then there's Tinder. Yeah. You know? I just think it's two different apples and oranges to me. Yeah. The <laughs> original question, however, was thoughtful before we got off track. <laughs> you said, wasn't it? You asked, like, what would you do if your spouse cheated? Yeah. Is it unconditional? Is it unconditional? And that's a tough question. I think it would depend on, for me, it would depend on how it was handled immediately after the fact. All right, Lauren. Did okay. you lie about it and cover it up? Did you instantly feel regret, come home, and then tell me the truth about it and let me react in real time? Those things would matter to okay. me. Would you prefer to watch? With the Rachel McAdams? Rachel McAdams, Tim situation. Oh. If Tina got if Rachel If he wanted McAdams, to involve me in the situation, it's like, a, okay, great. Yeah. Like, that's even, we both win. Now we're cooking, now baby. We, now we're it's both with question. Rachel McAdams. I don't like know. Like, instead like, of you being home, you know, commiserating and, you know, drinking, you know, wine out of a box. Right. Slapping that bag. <laughs> <laughs> what in the world? Where did my. Oh. Have you ever slapped the bag before? I don't know in, what you're saying. Wine in a box? Wine in a box. Oh, the, wine in a box. I thought we were back, we were back in the scenario. Yeah. No, no, no. You take the wine bag out of the box and you slap it and you just chug it at a party. Oh, gosh. 18 don't, years old. Don't Slapping the bag. Slapping the bag. <laughs> I'm forgetting the other scenario. I you know. were now joining in a room, and then you started talking about bags. I'm, I don't know what you're Sorry, saying. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> that's, that's, ultimately, that's probably the best case. The win-win. Right? But then in. he needs, will he participate with the Tom Hardy? Well, it, do mm. I, he I, would I, have to. Or do I have to offer it? No. Trust me, it's a layered, layered mm. complex experience. Well, listen. Hey. Good luck to Tim. Good luck to And Rachel, to I hope everybody. those two kids make it. Yeah, it'll, it'll be great. It'll be great. Here's to Tina great. and Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> May your life be filled with happiness. And to Riz in 30 seconds with Gal Gadot. I'll be it's just 15 fine. seconds. Okay. It's 15 seconds. I do want to bring up one more story before we hit the break. Um, there is uh, somebody doing the Lord's work, uh, helping the, uh, the soldiers uh, fighting for uh, Ukraine. Uh, there is a model... Uh, beauty pageant contestant and only fan star from Houston. Her name is uh, Fan Pay uh, Fan Pay Kung. Uh, she is an emotional support stripper for the troops out in Ukraine. Oh. I do want to recognize. <laughs> <Not standard>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she is. She has made her way over to the Ukraine and has a, had a series of intimate relationships, uh, mostly with soldiers out there. Uh, she says, I'm the sexy girl in Ukraine who wants to volunteer uh, and will probably put out. Oh. Probably. Hmm. Yeah, she first went to Ukraine back in uh, November of 2022 to volunteer in the uh, in women's shelters and orphanages in, uh, in one of the cities there, one of the small cities. Um, she had plans to move to Mexico uh, to live with another OnlyFans model, but... Uh, she says as soon as she left, she, she desperately wanted to come back to Ukraine. And she said she was losing her mind. So in February of this year, she returned, moved to Kiev, closer to the fighting. And what she does for the troops is she strips for them and uh, has sex with them. Huh? In order to boost morale. Yeah. All right, well. I just do want to recognize, hey. Hey. Thank you. That's, Thank you. That's <laughs> yeah, applause. I'm sure many people appreciate that. It's very. They're calling it humanitarian work. Uh, at the moment, she is a seeing a Ukrainian drone operator, a power plant worker, and two uh, info technology workers. Huh. So she her roster is full right now, but. Uh, <laughs> Dang. 
She's busy. She's busy, again, doing humanitarian work. Will there be statues boost, erect, helping boost morale? Rectified in her honor, like, in hundred years, like, when we look I, back? I bet you when the war is over, you know, she will be recognized. I hope so. Probably given some sort of Medal of Valor. Mm. For putting it all on the line for the troops out in Ukraine. Hey, anybody that goes to Ukraine to play music, to strip, to have sex, to, to whatever. And my to point invade. is... Would you do? Oh, you put a Ukrainian flag next to your Twitter avatar? Oh, yeah. that's what you did, huh? Right. Yes. Oh, good. Hold that's my doing beer. that's doing a lot. Right. This woman's going in dangers alley. This woman is walking the walk. Mm -hmm. She is. <laughs> is I'm not, walking the walk. I'm not being funny right now. This woman is a she's doing a service. She's doing a service. As I said, humanitarian work. She's doing the service. Yeah, the you ultimate look, surface. You look on Twitter or Facebook and you go, oh, look, I got a Ukrainian flag on my avatar. Uh -huh. Oh, Bono, you're going to be in a bomb shelter playing acoustically with the edge? Hold my beer. Mm hmm. Yeah. I'm having sex with everybody in this bomb shelter. In this bomb shelter. Uh huh. Mm. Oh, cool. U2's choose one acoustic. Awesome. People are crying. This woman is lighting people up and getting, keeping okay. them in good health. There's two doors. One, Bono on the Edge. Yes. <laughs> going to play. <laughs> then Joshua Tree and it's going to play where, where the streets uh, have no name. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. In this room. Okay. And this room is hot fan pay Kung. And edging. Gosh. Yep. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want behind that. Table. Where are the troops going? Where are the troops? Oh, but you know, Bono and Edge, huh? I don't know. Are they married? Yeah, the married guys. What do the it married doesn't do matter. You? It doesn't matter. War. Wartime brings. War is war. Okay. War is war. Good to know. Where are the troops going? War is hell. War is hell. Mm. They're, going, they're going to door Rafe, number two. where are they going? Are they going to door one with Bono on the edge or door two with uh, the OnlyFans model is, who's putting it out? I'll say door number one, all is quiet on a New Year's Day. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Door number two. Let's get the party started. Uh -huh. I'm exactly. coming out. Exactly. I mean, you know, each their own. There's going to be a couple big U2 fans probably. <laughs> but uh, a lot of people are going to go in that door number two. Yeah, I would say as well. <laughs> I would say as well. Yeah. So thank you, you're, again, for your, for your hard work and generosity. <laughs> uh, let's do this. And it's brought to you by Hot Shots Sports Bar and Grill. Proud sponsor, Team Riz. Visit hotshotsnet.com slash Team Riz. From St. Louis, Beth Loretta is our Hi, Team Riz number today. Uh, Beth has been a listener of The Point since junior high school and a longtime follower of The Riz Show. She listens to the show every day on her way to work and loves the vibe of the crew. She says the group really seems like a group of friends sitting around, giving each other crap, but in a funny, respectful way. Love that. Uh, Beth Loretta from St. Louis is our Team Riz member of the day. Get super sweet Team Riz member of the day soccer jersey. Get yourself signed up. 1057thepoint.com. Really crack yourself up, so, huh? Yeah, because uh, Steve says, in regards to the Ukrainian stripper, thanks for your cervix. <laughs> oh, my That's great. gosh. That is great. Uh, Hotshotset.com slash Team Riz. That just caught me right now. I just saw it out of the corner of my eye. just threw me off. All right, news is next. It is 7:10. It's Tuesday. All right, welcome back to the Riz Show. Phone number 314-624-3833 or 618-398-3833. Mick Ultra Studio Cams, 1057thepoint.com slash Riz, the socials at R-I-Z-Z. Show your emails, rizshow 1057thepoint.com. Also send us your instant feedback through the 1057 The Point mobile app. Uh, we're going to play Riz Show Password in a little bit. Prizes. Grab on celebrities coming up, porn on birthday. Does anybody have like um, a list of their goals, their like life goals written out? Like actually written out? Yeah, in a journal. I think oh, you, you do, do that at the beginning of each year. Not 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 like life goals, but like, hey, things I want to do. Things you want to accomplish. Year. Okay. Yeah. I do. Oh, you do? I do a five year plan every five years and I do a year plan. That's great. Every Every year. Well, and then at cool. the end of five years, I reassess and see what what gets checked off, what doesn't. Listen, I, I see the benefit. I, I, I don't do it. Maybe I should. 
It's manifesting, dude. No, I, I, I get that. You know, have like a, uh, uh, like a, like a goals board. What do they call that? Vision board. Vision, Vision board. That's board. it. Vision board. I get that. Uh, the good thing about writing your goals down is that you know you're constantly reminded about them. Uh, the bad thing is that if somebody uh, somebody steals them and then posts it on the internet, maybe um, that's a bit embarrassing. Huh. For example, somebody found a lost phone at a ski resort in Australia, halfway down the front slope. And they took a photo of the front and back so they could help locate the owner. But on the front screen was an, like a list of eight life goals for this person, whoever it was who lost the phone. And five of this person's uh, life goals are fairly standard. You know, get jacked and be 191 pounds. Okay. Boom. Quit all nicotine. Dumb. Have 25 grand in a bank account. Mm -hmm. Have a motorbike. Get good grades in college. Okay. The other three are a bit more unique. <laughs> in in the way that they probably weren't meant to be shared with the world. Like, get better at fighting. Okay. <laughs> Have three girls on the roster. <laughs> <laughs> Don't now, get a whoa, haircut whoa. for three months. What if he is a co-ed volleyball coach? Hmm? Oh, maybe. Okay. Maybe. Come on, man. Why, do, why does everybody have some sort Go right of there, huh? a good conclusion point. jumping? Yeah. Goodness Sorry gracious. About that. You Sorry. dirty Forgive fools. Co ed volleyball coach. This is actually coach, uh, Ali Marmel's uh, <laughs> list. <laughs> 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 they found this in, <laughs> in his gym bag. Yeah, it was fine. They don't get a haircut for three months. Now, I don't know if they found the owner, but most people online saw the, the college grades thing and, and said that this, this list is not uncommon for like a 20 year old guy. His ninth entry should have been zip phone and pocket so I don't lose it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, this guy's vision board, I guess, was found and, uh, and posted all over the internet. But it's good to have goals. Write them down. Hey, I hope you get those three girls on the roster. You know what I buddy. started this year was 100 days of new. It doesn't have to be 100 consecutive days, but it has to be 100 days in the year 2023 that I do something new. Oh, cool. And that, and I've been, I have that list on my phone. I don't know how many days I'm on, but. When are you going to start? <laughs> yeah, when are you going to start? <laughs> I only have 100 days left. Um, but that was. So you have to do something new? Yeah, something new. For 100 days. I for like 100 that days. idea. That's a good challenge. Yeah. So, so, for example, what have you done so far that's been new to you? Like I joined this show. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's a new, new job. Um, like. I uh, posted, <laughs> I posted my first question. I'm looking at my list. I posted my first question on "Am I the a-hole" on Reddit. Oh, uh, you time. did? Yeah. Can you share? No. <clears throat> I don't have to share. Okay. Um, Please. <laughs> then we don't know if it's true. Yeah. Oh. Things like I made a uh, new recipe, like little things, big okay, things. Okay. All right. And I think I'm on. I need to fill this up. I'm on day 27. I'm all right. Total well, you got, you got your work cut out for you. All right, let's do some news. Oh, yeah. We're going to do some news. And your news being sponsored by... Martin Jetco Heating and Air Conditioning, more reliable than your news source. You know, Rafe and I were talking uh, before the show about uh, just people flipping out on planes. and you know, It's crazy. Almost daily, there's something new. I was almost uh, looking around for it <laughs> when I got on the planes this, this last weekend. I was almost looking around going, okay... If anybody was to go crazy, who's it going to be? Right. I, think it's, I think it's you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't have like a clear cut winner uh, for my second flight, but for the first flight, yeah. I somebody's going to flip out. It's probably going to be somebody in this row. Uh, Rafe showed me a video of uh, a woman climbing on seats, almost possessed by like a demon. She was on the ceiling, bro. She was like got all like Spider Maned out above the luggage racks Jeez. with That's feet awesome. and was like crawling. Like the exorcist yeah. and like wow. screaming obscenities at people. It was so a bananas. <laughs> well, on about a week or two prior, there was the woman screaming on the plane about the guy that wasn't there. Remember oh, yeah. that one? He doesn't exist. Yeah. He's, or what was it? He's not real. He's not that real. MFR right there is not real. Yeah. Not a real one. Here's another one. trying to find her, man. People are in love with that girl. That's they wild are. to me. It's like all over the internet. People are trying to find her identity because people are like, I love her. <laughs> maybe, maybe she's beautiful. <laughs> and maybe she's right. Who knows, man? Uh, you who see knows? these movies. There's and, some conspiracy and, theorists are like, this is my girl. <laughs> well, I have uh, a woman here on a Spirit Airlines flight uh, who was filmed urinating on the floor. Oh. Just peeing on the floor. Uh, she didn't pay for the bathroom upgrade on Spirit. That's not wild. That's not original. <sighs> 
the gal, you know, doing the Spider Man thing. That's original. Uh, that's pretty original. Yeah. That takes uh, a lot of skill, too. She was recorded by uh, <laughs> flight attendants, and here's what that sounded like. You tell me you cannot, you close the door. Just say hello to the camera. The plane, is, the plane is stop you still. I cannot hold the beat. Well, you can do whatever you want. Hello. You can say the wall. You need to drink okay. water because your pee smells like you. Disgusting. Uh-huh. That's a flight attendant saying that. So That's... the woman is squatting in the galley and just urinating on the floor. Because they locked the doors, because the seatbelt sign was on. Oh, what, no. What was I don't know. She says she was blocked from using the restroom and she just peed on the floor. Hmm. Well, that sucks. Good thing is, it's a spirit flight. They don't have any padding on the seats. Everything's very wiped downable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think after every flight, they just hose it down. I'm pretty sure. It's like uh, roller coaster seating. Yo, by the way, I don't mean to sound like I'm bitching here, but. Um, I've been flying for a long time, lots and lots of flights. Uh, and the first thing I noticed when I got on this last plane was, damn, this is a new plane. This is fresh, like fresh stitching. The chairs are new. This is dope. What airline? This is American. I, I, uh, which is, and, and it's actually been a minute since I've flown an American, but I, I remember it like, I mean, it was noticeable. Like, this is a new plane, baby. Yeah. And I sat down, and this thing did not go back. The seats hardly go back. Yeah. It's a joke. Are, are, yeah, they are, have. Have we succumbed to the bitching about they people have guess so. leaning the chairs? Definitely cut back on the recline. Dude, and, and. Although they do make up for it with the entertainment center. There was no entertainment center. Zero oh, you screens, know one of those? Neither did have the free Wi Fi thing with all the movies and I stuff. I had free. I had nothing free um, that I understood. But either way, what I'm saying is they are, what, getting a half of a, like an extra half of a row in here because we're not leaning back yeah, anymore. That and, is why. And my knees, I'm a short guy. I'm 5'7", five, 5'8", five, whatever the heck it is. My knees were touching the front. And all I thought was, this is not so, a tall man's world anymore. Yeah. I, I will say the plane was clean. We flew American out to California. Then from there, we flew Alaskan. And the difference is amazing. Like Alaskan, yeah, Alaska, you actually had room for Alaska, Alaska, Alaska Airlines is supposed to be ass. the best. Dude, I've never flown Alaskan amazing. Airlines. But they're the best. They're supposed to be the best. Yeah, yeah. they win. They win. Uh, somebody locally got their car stolen while at a birthday party uh, last week. This was up in uh, Calverton Park in uh, North County. So at this big birthday party last week, a woman realized, oh, my God, I, I forgot something at the, at the house. I need to go back home. A guy named Mose Williams offered uh, to ride with the woman. Hey, I'll keep you company. I'll keep you company, go to your house, and then we'll come back to the party. So they got whatever it was and drove back to the party. Uh, the street was busy because, again, it was a big party. So Mose offered to park the woman's car. And she's like, oh, that's very nice of you, Mose. Thank you very much. Handed over the keys and... Ah! Oh, <laughs> See ya. Goodbye. <laughs> wow. Uh, the somewhat long Mose, play. Yep. Mose, Mose took off. Hi, Mose. He was heading Hi, back Mose. to his uh, radish farm or whatever the heck. Beef farm. Yeah. It, Beef what was farm. it? Beef farm. Beef farm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, never came back. Never came back. I can imagine it was probably the woman forgot the covered dish she was bringing to the party. So she's holding a casserole and Mose just. See ya. Mose? Oh, uh, he'll be back. Probably circle on the block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For three days. Three days he circled the block. Wouldn't you be, uh, if you're her, a little worried that the. He has your key to your apartment or wherever you just went from. Oh, may, I, yes. I don't know what, what kind of car it was. Maybe it was just a fob. I don't know. Oh, okay. Three days later, St. Anne police saw Moe's driving the stolen car, stopped him. He told cops that he'd borrow the car from a friend. What friend? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know her name. He was arrested, been charged with stealing a motor vehicle. I just thought that was a damn shame. I could imagine the woman just holding whatever it was. Green bean casserole. Oh, thank you. You want to park my car? What a gentleman. Yes. <laughs> Chivalry's what a, dead. What a gentleman you are, Mose. <laughs> Thank you for parking my car. Still Get back kind. to the party. Very Still sweet. kind of people in the world. Yep. You just parked it really far away. Um, hey, if you got into a car accident, um, do you guys know what to do? Like, what's the first? What's the first thing you do? Don't call, you lay down? You call the police, right? You compl start complaining about your neck. Ah, my neck. <laughs> Yeah, like what I, I was thinking about this the other okay, day. Okay, you call the police, but then what? Then, now you have to interact with the other driver. You don't admit if you get, fault. If you get into a wreck with somebody else. Right, you don't, everybody's not admitting anything. You know, at this point, we whip out our phones to record everything. Mm. So don't freeze up in the one moment where taking a video actually makes sense. So if somebody hits your car, whether it's you're driving, you're parked, whatever, one of the smartest things you could do is take a video of what happens next.
Like, if you get your get your interaction with the other driver on video, it could help a lot as, as you're dealing with insurance companies in the future mm. or with the police. It is legal to record video as long as you're in a public place, even if the other person doesn't want you to. Plus, knowing you're on video will probably stop you from talking too much. You know, there's no point in arguing who's at fault at the scene. Insurance companies, lawyers, police will handle that later. So just that was a little tip I read this morning. Like, hey, mm -hmm. start rolling. Mm -hmm. Start rolling video. I kind of feel like that could escalate things, though, too, man. I feel like people are less like, if you get out of your car and you're immediately filming, well, I, I feel like I, that would, like, make someone who's, when you're already in, like, a high stress, high adrenaline situation, now you're, like, you're mad at the person. You don't now have to even throw it in man. somebody's face, though. You can just have it in your hand. Just or That's just true, I guess. Just going. I guess so, yeah. You don't have to like jump out of the car. I got you on. I got right. you on video. You don't have to do that. Say hi to everybody on Facebook Live. You can just have it going in your hand. Just have a record of it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's what this thing said. It made sense. Yeah. I thought I'd tell. I mean, because chances are it's going to be really hard to recall certain things. I mean, if you're if of you're in the moment, you're freaking out and you're you're like assessing damage on your body, on your car, or on whatever. Like that's a, that's a, it's a traumatic moment, man. This is a lot of potential skips in there you know what i mean yeah and that's why they say you know in court eyewitness accounts aren't always the most reliable no because people tend to make up stuff in their head mm -hmm. or forget yeah hard, or forget hard to change the narrative hard to change the narrative if, when it's uh, on it's documented yeah when it's documented um trader joe's anybody a big fan of trader joe's yeah, yeah. Love them. trader joe's um well Products are constantly being recalled for things like salmonella, uh, but I've never seen this before. Uh, Trader Joe's just is your recall of two types of cookies they sell oh, because no. they might contain rocks. <laughs> Not the best ones. They have the best cookies, dude. My they kids might talk about them. They might contain rocks. Uh, they are called um, rock cookies. Joe's. Uh, is it Joe's? Jo jo Joe Joe's? Joe's? Yeah. Uh, they haven't elaborated or explained how rocks got into the cookies, but they've already been pulled from shelves. Anyone who bought them can bring them back in for a full refund. Uh, the two types of cookies that might be full of rocks are their almond windmill cookies oh. and their dark chocolate chunk with almonds. They're, They're only getting sued by dad's cookies because they have the patent on rock cookies. <laughs> <laughs> you had That's those the before, truth. dude? Dad's cookies, like scotch cookies or whatever they're yeah. called, they always have them at the bank. That's like eating a cinder block. Are dude. those the ones that have like chunks of whatever? They're just, they're unbiteable. Yeah, I don't can even shank know. somebody with a dad's There used to be these cookies they used to sell at school that had these, it almost looked like amber was in the cookies. Yeah, mm. th that would be dad's. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, those are dad's scotch cookies, I think. It's butter scotch. It's, you talking about the crispy oatmeal? Crispy no. oatmeal cookies? Da the dad's? Whatever was, they are, It dude. almost looked like, you know, uh, when you see like a, like a bug encased in amber. <laughs> yeah. it, it was what I would assume eating a charcoal briquette would be like. Is biting into a dad's I cookie. I remember these. This thing? It's a yellow box that says dad's right here, Nineteen twenty. Yeah, they have the single serving ones are even harder than those. Yeah, since 1929, that's when they got... I'm thinking of another They were one. baked in 1929, in and then they were let harden <laughs> for the last hundred years. Yeah, these Just are out to dry. Yeah, it's like Scott. That's why they're called Scotch cookies. They aged them for 95 years and then put them out in 2023. Yo, those, uh, <laughs> those, those Trader Joe's cookies, they have a holiday one that comes out. It's a peppermint Jojo. And, dude, that is the Christmas cookie of all Christmas. It's like an Oreo, but it's like a peppermint Oreo that's done better, probably has less... Whatever, Whatever is in there. Right. Yeah, it's got Dippables. more rocks, less uh, oh, bad stuff. Delicious. Hydrox. You can put rocks in there, it's fine. Heck yeah, their chocolate uh, you chip, know, your tooth is really good. As they're being mixed in the big vats, you know, just take a handful of gravel, just throw it in and see what happens. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's cheaper than most filler. So all the potentially uh, rock-filled snacks have, have sell-by dates between October 17th and October 21st. So if you, buy, if you bought either of those types, uh, but they have a different sell-by date, go ahead and, and chew with confidence, but... There you go. Rocks and the cookies at, uh, at Trader Joe's. Mm. Uh, a Florida jury has awarded $800,000 to a girl who suffered second-degree burns from a McDonald's chicken nugget. Whoa. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I don't think I ever remember eating a hot chicken nugget. <laughs> so in, in 2019. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I mean... That's not... They're always just room temperature. Yeah. Granted, it's been a long time. <laughs> but they were microwaved I, I, in the morning, and they haven't... 
Dude. Yeah, that right. uh, they're not as somebody who's in the service, Scott, they are never microwaved. They sorry. are put down in a fryer and kept in a warming tray. <laughs> I'm so sorry. This guy. Every time we talk about McDonald's, I, I still I've not had McDonald's in twenty twenty three. And like I, every time we talk about it, every time I drive by it, I'm like, I want it. I want it so <laughs> it's bad. It's not good. It's not good. I just had I feel natural. shame. We had that conversation about chicken nuggets and McDonald's McNuggets were like third or something. And I'm like, that is erroneous. Maybe I'm wrong. We had went to Nashville, did an all-day shoot. It was late. The only thing open was a McDonald's at, like, midnight. We go through. I don't want anything from there because I don't really like McDonald's. I was like, just give me the nugs. And I'll you, try went, it. you went chicken nug? No way. I was like, let me do it because I'm like, maybe I'm wrong. Nuggets, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm having, like, a false memory implant or something if they were rated so high. Got the sweet and sour because I know it's and some barbecue. Got home. Room, right out of the bag. Room temp. Room temp. Kind of chewy, hollow in the middle, just like I remember. And I'm like, these are not good. They are mm. not good nugs. I think they got associated with Happy Meals. And there's like a nostalgia factor making people like hang on to yeah. them or something. I don't know. I feel like I liked them back in the day. I loved them back I, in the day. I, I couldn't I tell just, you now. I don't, I don't remember the last time I had one, but I remember just fond memories. I do mm -hmm. have to admit, though, and, and maybe it's a nostalgia thing. Maybe it's a smell thing. I don't know what the hell it is. But like if somebody has McDonald's fries near me, I can taste them. Mm. And, yeah, I, and, yeah. I, and I want them. And I want them. Yeah, man. They're salted perfectly. Every time I, them, I go like, home. Oh, my God. I so think I like that. The story goes here. In 2019, Olivia Caraballo was four years old when, uh, I guess, the, the mom got a Happy Meal, handed the girl a chicken nugget. Um, mom parked and found the nugget lodged between the seatbelt and Olivia's thigh. And the kid was, like, severely burned. Yes. Uh, lawyers for the family said the nugget was 200 degrees, 40 degrees hotter than McDonald's claimed. Uh, attorneys for McDonald's argued that the little girl's pain and suffering ended after the after the injury healed. The family sued for $15 million. Whew. But the jury awarded $400,000 in damages for the past four years and another $400,000 for future consideration. 800 k all in? 800 k all in. That's rolling the dice and you won the lottery. That's good. Now, minus attorney fees, you know, they, they walked away with for second-degree burns. Wow. Uh, in a, uh, another uh, food injury uh, story, if you go to a Thai restaurant, right, you, you expect the food to be, what, spicy? Right? Thai yeah. food is pretty yeah. spicy. Some curry. Uh, if you go to, if you order a, 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 at a Thai restaurant something called Dragon Balls, you, you'd be expecting to breathe fire, right? Mm -hmm. Dragon Balls. Dragon Balls. And maybe literally, a woman is suing a Thai restaurant in California called Coup de Thai, saying the food was so spicy that it burned her. And she went to the place two years ago and ordered the Dragon Balls as an appetizer, as one would do at this place. They were so spicy that she suffered chemical burns to her vocal cords, esophagus, and the inside of her right nostril. And it isn't a joke. She says her throat and voice, quote, have incurred permanent injuries and will forever be damaged. Now, the dish was marked as spicy, but she asked the server, hey, can you make it less spicy? And she was told, yeah, they could. But apparently that didn't happen because she had a severe reaction to the spice. And the restaurant says, they've never heard of their Dragon Balls being that extreme to the point where somebody required medical attention. The woman is looking for unspecified damages plus medical expenses and compensation for lost earnings. I got a lot of questions. Like, yeah. it, was this after one bite? Did you scarf it? Did it not hurt immediately? Did it hurt afterwards? Did you drink no water? And what kind of pepper were they using? Was it ghost pepper? Yeah. Because wanna... cayenne wouldn't do that. Well, Thai chilies. They, well, they use Thai chilies. Which is... Typically spicier than cayenne peppers, but also uh, not as spicy as habaneros. That's strange. Is this, is this an al goofed up. Yeah, I wonder if this is like an allergy. She's arguing that they failed to test the heat intensity of their chilies, which were, quote, unfit for human consumption. But this is an isolated incident. And and I'm not blaming her. I'm saying, like, I, I, I got a lot of questions. This, to me, I don't know, it's, it's got my spidey senses tingling. Because one poison control physician was like, hey, chilies can irritate the mouth and the throat, cause nausea, heartburn. But they're not associated with permanent tissue damage. Yeah, do you think it was a chemical that someone accidentally put in the food? Man, I don't know. She said right nostril. So, like, she, like, uh, sneezed it or, you know, coughed it uh, up in some sort. Yeah. If, I eat, like, if I eat, like, really, really spicy food, I start getting the hiccups. Yeah. Oh, yeah? I get the hiccups. You sound like the cartoon town drunk? Yes. It's coming out of the barrel? Hiccup. 
Dragon Balls is a dish with spicy chicken fried with mint, shallot, green onion, cilantro, kaffir lime. I've never heard of that. Kaffir um, lime. Kaffir lime. <clears throat> That's all. Sound gra sounds great. Yeah, sounds Give delicious. me some of them Dragon Balls. Mm. Give me some of them Dragon Balls in my mouth. Just don't eat it with your nose. And then so. you can make it to your you spice level. So she didn't say like five spice. She was saying. She said tone down the spice. Mm. And she says it didn't. And now she is suing. Um. There are warning labels on pretty much everything these days, right? Virtually every product has a long write-up with, like, red lettering about how the thing could be dangerous. And, and it wasn't always this way. You know, there were very few warning labels until the 1960s when they started going on cigarettes. And then other products followed suit. And things went really crazy in the 90s when everybody started filing lawsuits. Now, here's the problem. Here's the problem with warning labels now. We've Researchers. We've been anesthetized to them. We're desensitized to them. So now we're not even. Not, now now, we're not, we're, nobody even reads them. <sighs> and you know why? And you, or even notices them on labels anymore. Dude, you know what's wild? Have you been to Canada recently? Uh, not recently, but I know on the cigarette packs. Yeah, the cigarette packs. So like in England and, and Canada, this, especially the Canadian ones. Have you seen the cigarette packs, Rafe? Yeah, they're gross. Uh, they're like, I've seen them in other countries that are the same. Yeah, they're, I, like, they're like this big and they all have a photo. Oh, it's yeah. like babies or cut open lungs. Yeah, lung, like, like lung mean, cancer. Like, dude, gnarly, gnarly photos of the medical effects of smoking. And I'll have a big warning with a photo. And man, when I first saw those, I was like, oh my gosh, dude, this is going to end smoking in Canada. No, it doesn't. People just don't look yeah, at you it. You don't look at them. Yeah. yeah, you just look at James Dean instead. You're like, sweet. It's, so, it's crazy. I mean, so, you see these photos, you're like blown away and then a year later it's not a big deal yeah so researchers like hey we, we're becoming desensitized to warning labels they're, they're pointless at this point <laughs> you know one expert says they've they become ubiquitous if everything in the supermarket is labeled as dangerous you don't know what to buy this means that companies can't rely on people reading through all the warnings so they may redesign some products to make them safer for for consumers like for example requiring somebody to pull a lever and push a button to start a lawnmower, mm -hmm. rather than having it start with the key, with the with the turn of a key. <sighs> and I mean, so they're actually going to make the product safer instead of just putting the warnings on them. <clears throat> I don't know. Hmm. Oh, that that's good. That that is good, but but the labels itself. Do you label shop when you go? That's yeah. like big. You read. I mean, we do. We not everything, but. If yeah. you know, oh, I look yeah. at ingredients. Yeah. yeah, we do. I look at ingredients. Mm -hmm. But warning labels, you just kind of gloss over them. Yeah. I think the ingredients Risk are warning reward. labels. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Consumer Reports says if you're going to be in the market for a used car over the next couple months, be on the lookout for flooded cars damaged during New England's recent storms. And it could be hard to tell if a used car is flood damaged, and, uh, and damages usually don't get reported on a vehicle's history report. Oof. Wow. My nightmare. Why is that? Flood damage? I don't know, but they said there, there's going to be a lot of cars in the marketplace that were junked because they were flooded out, fixed up, and then put back on the market. Well, if they were fixed up, I mean, is that okay? Yeah. So you want to know if this is, wouldn't you want to know if How this do you was. Tell? Well, they said if you want to see if a vehicle you're interested in is, da is damaged, then check out the National Motor Vehicle Title Information System, it's a government backed database. Yeah, it cracks down on the practice of what they call title washing, when when cars that have been totaled or stolen get clean new titles in states with with uh, lax regulations. So we bought a van. Uh, our band bought a van years ago. Creek, Creek Fire did, and it was a it was super cheap. I was like, why why is why is this thing so cheap? And the guy's like, well, man, I'll just be fully honest because if you do your research, you can find out anyway. It was like the front end was like completely destroyed and, and redone. So it was like a part of the chassis or something, which made it basically like really hard to sell, right? Mm-hmm. Well, it was a good price, so we, we rocked it, and we drove the crap out of that. Probably 100-something thousand miles and never had a single issue. It was the greatest, it was the well, greatest I mean, single purchase got, the band ever lucky. made. Thank God. I'm just saying, like, I mean, if... Ask questions. If, yeah, if, if the research is done, and yes, the, 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 the fixes have been done, the proper fixes, that it's all, it's passing this, it's passing that. I mean, shoot, I guess... Take the, take the discount, you know what I mean? Right. Well, they're saying that 400,000 flood damage cars will hit the market this year. 400,000, that's a lot. 
Mm -hmm. That's flood the market. And uh, finally, um, did you hear about this new amusement park opening up in, in Oklahoma? Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Yeah, it's a massive new America-themed amusement park coming to Oklahoma, just off Route 66. It's going to be called American Heartland Theme Park and Resort, opening in 2026. It's going to cost $2 billion. <sighs> Dang. And it's going to be around the same size as Disneyland. Mm. Jeez. Even the layout is similar. Like, some of the designers used to work for Disney, so that might be why. But um, I'm not sure how far away that's going to be from here. What's the town? Vanita. So the entrance will have a huge map of the USA on the ground with a big American flag sticking out of the center. Once you're inside, you'll have different lands, just like Disney parks. That is under five hours. It'll have roller coasters and other rides scattered throughout the park. Um... Here are the six sections and what they're going to look like. So it's based on the different parts of America. Like Liberty Village, it's going to look like an American town of the 1950s. Kind of like Disney's Main Street, USA. The mock-ups show old cars on the street. A paper boy sell newspapers. A town square with a, rec a replica of the Liberty Bell. Then you got the Great Plains section. Think windmills and silos and a barn with some sort of Charlotte's Web attraction. Then you got the Bayou Bay. Mm. Designed to look like Louisiana or Mississippi 150 years ago. Water park? It'll have Ooh. seafood restaurants, so what looks like a swamp-themed Lazy River ride, an attraction called the Voodoo House. Damn, man, I'll tell you, this is a great place to put something. If you're going to put it in the middle of the country and kind of, you know, not pick like a St. Louis or a Kansas City or something, or an Oklahoma City. So Ven Venita, Oklahoma is pretty much the first, like, major thing you're going to hit when you get into Oklahoma from Missouri. So it is... In between Springfield and Oklahoma, uh, in, in between Springfield and Oklahoma City, not far from Tulsa, not far from Kansas City, Sweet. not far from Little Rock, not far from St. Louis. I mean, so you're going. Yeah, you got, got a couple of big cities within driving distance. It's really, I mean, it's four four hours and fifty two minutes if we left right now. That's three hundred and thirty three miles. So they're competing. Is this competing with Silver Rock City then? Oh yeah, definitely. That's very close. With Six Flags, everything. I That's bet. weird. Yeah. Uh, Big Timber Falls. It's, it's supposed to look like the Northwest. Pine Trees Mountains. A Splash Mountain knockoff called Bigfoot Falls. It's not far from Fayetteville, uh, Arkansas, and that whole northern wow. corner right there, that northwestern corner of Arkansas, is like one of the fastest growing areas in the country. Hmm. Uh, Stony Point Harbor is a New England theme thing, like uh, like the coast of Maine or Massachusetts. It'll have a big sailboat and a haunted lighthouse attraction. And then Electropolis, basically their version of Disney's Tomorrowland. Yeah, just say they have Trampoline City, which is their, Dis their version of Overland. Overland. yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Jenny on the chat says, Tornado Alley, perfect spot for a theme park. Well, point. well there's well, a ton. I'm sure they've this. taken that into consideration. Interesting. Uh, that's the park itself. But they're also going to have a huge four-star hotel with a boardwalk and water park next to it. A huge RV park with 750 parking spots, a campground with 300 cabins you could stay in. Oh, you know what's wild? It's actually even closer to Dallas than it is to St. Louis. So this is, oh, you know what this is going to do? This is, this is one of those things that now there's a spot to go if you're on your way down to Texas. Oh, you're going to St. Louis? Oh, we'll dip by Venita, Oklahoma, hit the theme park, mm -hmm. and then go what down. They're, what they're kind of billing it as, uh, and they're not saying how much tickets are going to cost yet. So the RV park's going to open in 2025. The theme park itself will be 2026. Uh, they're hoping to attract 5 million guests a year. But they say they want to make it a more affordable option than Disney or Universal. This is going to crush. You're yeah. trying to be the Wisconsin Dells of the lower Midwest. Yeah. Very cool. Dude, e equal to Shreveport, Little Rock, uh, Memphis. I Let mean, me think of Wichita's not far. All that. Oh, yeah. It's going to be huge. Hmm. It's going to be huge. Good for them. Good for us. Good for us. Yay. Good for us, guys. That's, yeah, that's right. an advantage. That's right. Yeah, maybe, well, nah. I was going to say, maybe this will get me out of going to Disney. Mm -mm. You're going to all of them now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you already got six flags <laughs> checked off. Just adding another, another thing to do. <laughs> all right, that is your news. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll come back, and we're going to play the Riz Show Password Game. All right, we've got Disturbed tickets. We've got tickets to go see Ghost. We've got tickets for Nickelback. We've got tickets for Blue October. Rafe, explain the game. All right. It's just like Password you saw on TV, only a simpler version. You're going to call in. You're going to pick a, a Riz team member to play with. They will be the clue giver. You will be the receiver. I will reveal the password. You can pick any of us, including myself. It's best two out of three. We're adding a new element today. Best two out of three. You can't use, you can, you can only give one word clues. They cannot be a derivative of the word. For instance, if it, 
If watermelon was the word, you can't say water or melon. Yeah. Okay. And you can use a phrase if you want. If the for instance, because somebody argued with me about this last time, if if the clue is makeup, if the word and you said lipstick, you can say lipstick. It is a conjunctive word. You can yeah. use conjunctive words. Don't argue with me about it. But you can't use a phrase. You can't say like lipstick and eyeshadow. One okay. word. You give the clue. Whoever calls in, uh, we're going. The new thing I want to add today is whoever's in the room, you can either pass or play. If you think it's advantageous for you to guess, if you think the word is hard and it's going to take more than one guess, you can pass. Or you can choose to play. But we'll introduce that after the break. But so you can pass the once? For instance, like when we start off, whoever the first caller is gets to go first. Then after that, the winner of, of the that previous round. word gets to go first. At that point, whoever's in studio can pass or play. They can say, we're going to pass. That okay, way I get the a other second person. shot okay. at it. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. All right, 314-624-3833 or 618-398-3833. It's a simple game. You just have to pick a ratio member. It's very simple. And uh, and we'll play, and you have a chance to win some fabulous prizes. 314-624-3833 or 618-398-3833. Riz Show Password is next. We are just talking about cars, and uh, what are you looking up, Rafe, to see if your, your car is on that list for flood damage? Well, you're always worried about that, you know? Like, that was my big thing about, I think Carfax does a flood check. You started talking about it earlier, and I was like, man, I got to, that's my biggest fear of buying, like, Carvana or any kind of online, cars.com, whatever. Car yeah. Guru, there's tons of them now. They're pretty painless, but you're kind of trusting that company to right. do... They gave me the Carfax on everything, you know, when I, when you look up, most of them come with the Carfax, but I'm like, the way you phrased it earlier, I was like, oh, they don't have to report flood damage, but Carfax does a flood investigation. Mm. So that's good. Who's well, got that going for me. Well, I, th I think Which they, nice. they, I think they, I think they're required to not all of them do. Oh, like as long as it's like, Clay, do you know who's going to notice? Hey, I, you know, it's dry, right? Try. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. I wonder That's if there's fine. a way to tell mechanically. I'm listen, I'm sure a good mechanic will tell you. Now, as far as cars go, uh, when you when you buy a car, there's there's no doubt you're considering things like make and model as well as you know price. But you consider uh, color when it comes to buying a car, of course. Yes. Yeah, you know, there there are colors Sometimes. that we like and colors that we don't like. Sometimes I would say, okay, one, two, three, four, five. The last five vehicles I bought, I've been able to pick the color twice. Okay. Now, I don't know how you get this job, but uh, I don't know what school you go to, but uh, there is a color psychologist. <laughs> Sign <laughs> wow. me up. What a gig. And uh, this color psychologist says the color car you pick actually says a lot about you as a person. I can't wait for this. And she says every color has a psychological message behind it. Yes. So you want to go first, Lauren? <clears throat> sure. Okay, so what color is your car? Black. Black. Did you choose? Yep. You chose black. I, I, and let me just put this out there. I, I love have, I've only had like white or black cars. And yeah. I, I think I always will. Like there's also like a gray that's out there right now that's kind of like a green gray that I like. But I've never wanted like a red car mm -hmm. or anything like that. Like okay, but, but you would drive white. a black car right now. My that... wife is the exact same way. She only she only wants black cars, but she is now willing to deal with grayscale. There you so, go. So she's driving a white vehicle right now. But usually she's like, if I had a choice, it would always be black with I'm black with wheels. Her. Black is elegance and power. Hello, everybody. <laughs> and the color psychologist yes. says uh, you'll no doubt see many black cars on the road. In fact, it accounts for about 20% of all vehicles. Interesting. Those who chose a black color usually have a desire for power and control. It can also reflect a taste for elegance, sophistication, and a timeless appeal. I'm yeah. definitely control That's freak. That's you guys. That's, That's me. both of you. <laughs> Hello, Mallory. You're my people. All right, uh, Rafe, what color car you drive? Well, the Jeep is white. So what, so what do you want to be known for? What color car? Let's, let's, let's go white. Let's white. see what it says. White is purity and optimism. Hmm. White. White is the is the uh, aside from black the next most popular color on the road. Every time that I've picked one, the last two vehicles that I've actually been able to pick the color, both of them were white. Mm. 
So white, white two, two white trucks and a white Maxima. White Pure reflects brothers. qualities such as purity, simplicity, Pure and gross. optimism. White is considered fresh and modern, and choosing a white car may suggest a forward-thinking, innovative spirit in sync with the cutting-edge technologies and progressive thinking. Now, I don't like white with I don't like white vehicles with the silver wheels necessarily. I hate white cars. I like <laughs> I like like my truck was was white with all blacked out badges, blacked out wheels. I like that. It looked like a stormtrooper. I love that look. Mine had gold. Oh, see, that's cool as heck, too, gold man. Gold rims. Oh, yeah. I like gold color. God, it was part we, of, like, a special edition. Yeah, see, that's, that's great. That's awesome. Scott, what color is your car? It is, well, if I did high school, it would be a mint green was the first one I ever bought that I chose. Uh, but the current one is silver. Silver. Okay, I guess we'll call that gray. Yeah. Okay. Like I, so I drive a gray car. That's practicality and responsibility. Mm. Gray mm. is a sign of someone who is practical and responsible. Gray cars tend to hide dirt and grime well. An advantage for busy people who prioritize function over showiness. This color may reveal an understated, reliable personality. Okay. Mm. That's you, man. Nice. Sweet. Sure. Is mint green on there? What did mint green uh, say? Green is harmony and balance. His was like mint, like not even mint. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess we'll call it green. Harmony and balance. His was like a like, things on the planet. His was like an Easter M and M green, then then washed like <laughs> like if someone put it in their mouth and spit it out. They say green, <laughs> green. Uh, isn't a common color, but uh, those who pick it are likely lovers of nature, being in harmony and in balance. Love for gardens, parks, and the countryside can be reflected in the choice of a green car. Perfect. You know, they say geniuses pick green, mm -hmm. but you didn't pick it. That's right, Greg. <laughs> and you drive a yellow car. Yes, it's yellow. Yellow and orange. Which is the last. Which, but your last two cars were yellow and orange. Out of three. Oh, no, you had the three, truck in between. Yeah, two yeah, of them. White truck. Uh, yellow and orange uh, and other colors that aren't often spotted but can suggest somebody... Who has a cheerful, sunny disposition and creative spirit? Tight. You, man. Someone who has such a brightly colored car is also likely to be extroverted, fun loving, and possibly a bit eccentric. Well, I'm one of those three. Uh, red, eccentric. you said red, energy, yeah. and passion. That's what I'm saying. Uh, blue is calmness and stability. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think I've ever had a. Oh, yeah, I did have a blue this car. This is all horse crap. Wasn't, yeah, wasn't cho like it was current. chosen for me. The van? You got a blue car? I, it's a graphite gray, technically, but it looks blue in certain lights. It's one of those weird metallic. Yeah. But it looks pretty, like a navy. If or you buy gray. any of this crap. Oh, it's dumb. It's dumb. This is going to BuzzFeed and taking a quiz and finding out what friend's character you are. <laughs> yeah. I'm a Rachel, a color psychologist. It's fun. Get the hell out of here. It's supposed to be fun. We're just we had trying fun. to have fun. We had fun. <laughs> well, he has, a, he has a great car that he's not in for the fun. He wants practicality. Yeah, clearly. He wants his, yes. These quizzes have to be practical and not showy. Uh -huh. too showy something. for you, dude. Uh -huh. You have to hide something in these quizzes. This is the verbal Get out of here with the moisture. color psychologist. <laughs> You know I'm, sure, I'm sure your dad who paid $30,000 a year for you to go to school, my, for you to be a color psychologist, yeah, yeah. I'm sure he's proud. My kids picked <laughs> picked the color because they said it looks just like Simpsons yellow. They're like, we'll call it Homer Simpson. you got to get this one. So yeah. I did. I'll uh, be honest. When I look, I think it's I'm more likely to choose colors I don't want. I have a few that I'd be like, I, do, I won't drive. Like, I don't want to drive a red car because I think it's flashy and it gets pulled over a lot. And I like to... Speed reasonably, <laughs> sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I, I think I avoid colors, and then I, I try to avoid trendy colors because of resale. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's yeah, some. Yeah. Uh, I feel like green goes in and out. Like Hunter Green it does. was like big, and then yeah. no one wants it for like ten yeah. years. Dude, and same for back. beige. Same for beige and brown. Oh, bro, there's some like on the road right now that like when they came out, I was like, oh, those are kind of tight, beige. and I already hate them. Oh, you They're do? like the, oh. the khaki color. Yeah, the, 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 the awesome. desert khaki. I kind of yeah, like it. Depends on the vehicle. Beige. You put that on Tacoma, I'm down. Car, right? Yeah, but that, you. yeah, but that in five years, it's going to be out. Let me see what the color psychologist well, yeah, says. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Beige. If you khaki. Get, if you get a beige car, you're an idiot. I like a oh. white car with a beige yeah. interior. I think that's pretty sharp looking. Uh, well, interior is different. I'm Pins. talking about the outside. Like, there's certain colors that I'm like, that is, there was like a purple phase. There was no, like a weird plum purple phase. Purple it was like, phase. Jeff had a purple car. Purple, purple phase. phase. And it was like not purple, but not blue. It was like neither. And it was kind of one of those like, oh, God, can't we just, can't you just 
pick? Just make it a purple. Make your if you, mind. If yeah. you're going purple. What, the Subaru? Make, nah, before that. Remember his Hyundai? Oh, yeah. But wasn't that? It was like an in-between. Yeah, that was, a weird, that was a weird color. And, and it was like you, a bubble, and, bubble gum. Or yeah, like it, it couldn't decide. It was just afraid to in decide. Certain blurb, sun, blurb, in certain sunlight, it was one it color. It was afraid. <laughs> yeah, it was afraid of going actual it's purple. Like a dude, they just started doing the, I just looked at these new Mazda CX-50s or whatever, these SUVs that are coming out this year, and they have almost like the Predator. They got reflective. Mm. Reflective uh, paint yeah. jobs, so they I've reflect their environment. So if you're in the woods, it'll turn the color. Oh, look at that! Yeah, they that got a and, and that right. purple. Trippy, man. That purple is like cartoon purple. Mm. It's oh, yeah. it's it, yeah. the Jeep is like uh, the the new Jeeps that just came out. Some of them, not the four by E's, but uh, what are the other ones? Uh, the, the Wranglers came out in a Prince purple. It's called like Purple Rain or something, and yeah. it is freaking sweet. That purple is the best. Yeah, cool, but uh, can't do it, man. Black or white for me. Gray. Give me gray. Or possibly that weird green gray that's out there. All right. Shall we give away some stuff? Yes. I guess so. Oh, yeah. All right. We're playing Riz Show Password. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you guys on the phone, we'll pick uh, two contestants. Uh, you guys get to pick a Riz Show member to be your teammate. Uh, we will then receive the password from Rafe, and we'll go back and forth giving one-word clues to you guys on the phone. And best two out of three will win their choice of prizes. Disturbed tickets, ghost tickets, nickelback tickets, blocktober tickets. It's a simple game. It's a simple game. The only thing that we need to know in the room is you are allowed to pass. First caller will go first in the first at the beginning the of each round, game. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know what? Sometimes the the second the second password, the second clue mm -hmm. is the one that triggers it can be. It depends on the word. Moon had Moon had a couple home runs last time we played where I couldn't believe the person got it. Yeah. yeah so it's that, like it's all about like do, your faith, your connection with the person over the phone. Yeah. Well, let's get to it. That was a credit to the to the callers. It let's was. get to it. All right, Chris and O'Fallon. Good morning. Good morning. All right, pick, happy birthday, Riz. Thanks, buddy. Pick a teammate. Uh, I'm gonna go with Moon. All yeah, right, baby. Moon. Yeah, so baby. it's Moon and Chris. Ooh, Chris, Chris. All right, hang on, Chris. 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 Chris, Chris. Uh, Shane. Uh, uh, learn. Learn. All okay, right. so it's moon and learn. Okay, so moon, you are going to get the first clue. Go get the clue. Go get the word from. Oh yes. From Rafe. Both of you get the word. <laughs> All right, Chris, you're up first. Oh, God. All right, moon is going to give the first clue. And here we go. Okay, the first clue is groceries. Groceries. Chris, uh, shopping. Shopping. Okay. No. All right, Learn. Shane. So think about what you just heard. Late buzzer. Um, place. Go on now, plates. Place. Place. Oh, place. I'll go Schnooks. Is it Schnooks? No. No. Moon. Um, so you've heard all the clues so far, right? The clues and the guesses, Chris? Yes. Yes, I heard. I'll lead the witness now. Deerbergs. Uh, Aldi's. Okay. Aldi's? No. All right. Shane, <laughs> Shane let's mine. Well. Hey, just give the clues. All right. <laughs> just give clues. No I more I want to connect. <laughs> all right, Shane. Um, shopping. <laughs> Um, strawberries. That was a clue already given. Was it? <laughs> it was too much. Crushing it in the room. Crushing it. Killing it. I need to write the words down. I'm only thinking about myself. All right. You guys are killing me. Moon, come on. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> Chris. All right. Uh, um, goodness. Wow. We got this, Moon. Okay, okay. Let's see. Um, let's go with... Walmart. Oh, that was going to be my guess. Well, say something, Chris. Uh, super center. Super store. <laughs> no, Rafe. No, shut, your uh, uh, shut your face. Oh, man. That's, uh, he got it. He got it after, like... What? <laughs> Off the rails. Oh, man. What the game has gone so on. You sad. gave a clue. We won. Chris said, yeah. he said Supercenter, <laughs> then he said Supermarket. The word is Supermarket. 
Well, he said <laughs> super place, super. He said like four things. Right. But then he said supermarket, <laughs> and then Lauren said that's it. All right, you want to scratch it? I got alternate words. You want to scratch that? No, one no, for being no. A train wreck. <laughs> you guys are both in trouble. <laughs> I love how you said. No, you know the trouble is Chris. <laughs> this is the trouble. So, oh, they say uh, one word. <laughs> okay. How about both win? Okay, no. We crushed Chris. Honestly, yeah, we did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this round. Okay, I thought y'all were going to keep going. Chris I thought y'all were going to keep going. Man. Chris can win. Rafe, make the call. We're going to scratch it. We're going alternate word. Whoa. You took that from Chris? I'm taking it. He said one three guess. words. First of all, it took you guys guess. way too long Listen, to guess man, it. I'm Second just, of all, three he said just, three words. There's no you guys. I'm just defending my guy. He said superstore, super place. I'm just defending my guy. Supermarket. supermarket. Uh, yeah, I was just trying to think of the word. I knew super it was a supermarket. Place. That's okay. We forgot this. One guess. All right. I love this. I love it. We'll see if we need a third. I'll get an alternate. This is a new word. All right. New word. Just say one word. Moon, everybody. you're allowed to no, pass or play. No hints. Okay, we're going to play. We're going to play. No, no hints. hints so nothing. Don't give him contextual clues. All right, are you ready, Chris? This is a new word. I am ready. Word. New word, Why? baby. New clean. word. <sighs> Aerial. Plane. All right, Shane. The ocean. It's two words. Or ocean. The sharks. Well, Chris. What, what was his guess? Sharks. You better pay attention. I had I threw my headphones. I'm well, upset. that's on you. Okay, okay, here we go. Disney. There we go. Um. Oh God. Five seconds to guess. Oh, seconds. Um. Oh, come on. Yeah, you're done. Oh, no, sorry. Man, I lost it there. Chris. Shane and Lauren. Okay, Shane. Work. Sebastian. Sebastian Bach. Why are you guys listening? I got this. Lose. I got this. Combine the clues. Yep, I got it. Moon, both of you. stop talking. I'm screaming at Just both of them. Just say the word. Fish. Mermaid. Yes. Thank you. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, Shane. Holy moly. You're just trying to tell people how to play the just, game. Both of them. I'm, I'm yelling at both of them. Here's a tip for murder. all you listeners. Wow. Listen oh, to Mermaid you. Ariel. Listen. Ariel the Mermaid Ariel. from the Mermaid. Oh. Why come nobody said you would I don't know, man. Why don't you play? I, nobody chose me. <laughs> All right, come get your second clue. Why? You guys come get your next clue. Let's get. Let's put this oh, still doing out it. of its yeah, misery. Yeah, we got. Oh, I'm so that's out. only one right. Oh that's only one. Oh my god! All right, here we go, Shane. All right. Who's going first? Moon has the option to pass or play. Winner goes first. <sighs> okay, you know what? I'll pass. All right, cool. Pass. Shane. Here we go. Shane, Shane, lock in. Remember the clues from the previous. There is no clues from previous. Well, I'm, I'm talking when we go further in this game. I, I feel we're going 10 rounds here. <laughs> here we go. Shane. Here we go. Shane. Slow. The turtles. Good guess, Shane. Rafe. You, Rafe, I can be supportive Rafe. of the. <laughs> that has no. Okay, nobody's nothing. allowed to talk. It's dead air, dude. <laughs> okay. Attention. <laughs> okay. Mollusk. Mm. Um. Whale. You know, I was trying to blow mollusk. Oh. Okay, Shane. Shane. Shell. Um, it's nails. Oh! Yeah! Yeah! That was good. Yeah! All right, here we go. One, one more, guys. All right, one more. This is, is, this all, is for the, all the marbles. All the marbles. To get rid of the supermarket marbles. controversy. Was Mollusk a bad? I mean, was that, that was bad? Good. That, that was, was great. Great. That was good. Well, come on. Yeah. <laughs> all right, come get your come clues, get your clues oh, yeah. please. Come, come and yeah, get sorry. your clue. All right. mm -hmm. Come and get your clue. Come and get your clue. Learn? Yes. Player pass. Um, we're gonna pass. Gonna pass. Okay, so 
All right. <laughs> okay. The word is, I mean, the clue is hand. Mm. Fingers. <laughs> Loves that buzzer. I do. Um, <clears throat> all right, Shane. Uh, warm. Hawaii. Uh, On to Moon. Moon and Chris. Moon and Chris. Winter. Gloves. Yeah! 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 Hawaii. All right. All right. Sorry, Shane. Oh, it's such that was tension. Fun. I love Hang that, on, Chris. <sighs> I would have said OJ. <laughs> oh, I hope you get to play, Riz. Since we're I just love that. So I, I, I didn't say as a first clue. I would have as a first clue. <laughs> that, uh, no, I mean I was, that could have been no after, football. After, Good job after in the hand. chat room. A lot of you guys hand. got there way quicker in the chat room after than anybody hand, else. I hope you get to play this round. Uh, I, good luck. I love that the clues were fingers and warm, and that guy chose Hawaii. <laughs> well, have you ever been to Fingers, Hawaii? You no. Know, well, Dog the Bounty Hunter lives in Hawaii. He wears fingerless fingers. gloves. <laughs> good point. All right. Next, right. back Am to caller. Amanda, hello. Hi, how are you? All right, pick a, pick a team Riz member. I choose Riz this morning. Oh, cool. Oh, How's your right, chance? Fantastic go. choice, Amanda. All right, Jason, Thank pick you. somebody. Good morning, Riz. Happy birthday. Thank you, buddy. Uh, we'll go with Moon this morning. All right. <laughs> All right. I feel it. I feel it. I'm going to get my clue. Moon. Wow. All right. Clues have been given. Um, Who called in first? I believe Amanda. Amanda called in so, first. So, Riz, you have the choice to pass or play. We're going to pass and we'll go to Moon. Jason, Jason. and Moon. Let's play Riz Show Password. Uh, flower. Rose. Uh, Amanda, yellow. Sunflower. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Can I say... Here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna put something down. I just want I just want to make sure you this doesn't count it as as two words because that's you know you know what I'm saying like that's can I put that? Ask Rafe. Show it to me. May, may I may I say may I say this, sir? We have a timeout here. Um, Do you see what that is? Yes, I'll allow it. Okay. Oh. Oh. oh look okay. At that. Ready? BB gun. Daisy. Yes. Daisy, very good. Yes. I was, you straddled My the line. Man. I'm going to be honest, that straddled the line, but I'm allowing it. My well, next clue I would have been the Donald. Line and, I, and I asked for it. Oh. It was good. No, Donald you're great. I thank you for Donald. asking good first. Luck. Good for you. I avoided good. the controversy. That was good. My right. man, locked in, baby. Locked in. That felt okay. great. All right, next word. Next word. All right, next oh, yeah. word. Come get it. Okay. So far, Jason and Moon are in the lead, and they get the choice to play or pass. We'll see how this goes. Moon, are you going to play or pass? I'm going to go ahead and play. Moon and Jason are going to play. Let's play Riz Show Password. Jason, first clue, second word coming at you. Emergency. Mm. Break. Uh, Amanda, Barnes. What was that? Barnes. Farm. Uh, she was zoned out. Room. What? Emergency room. No, brother, I didn't even give you a clue. <laughs> I didn't, even give, I didn't even give you a clue, man. You're killing me. <laughs> Who are these people calling in today? <laughs> Amanda. Amanda. People are taking over our show. Amanda, can you, can you hear yours. me? Oh you, you literally just fumbled. <laughs> Amanda, ready? Yes. Mobap. Oh, come on. One word. That's... Hospital. Yeah, that's two words, and you know it. You didn't. No, you didn't get it approved. A, it's, I'm going to say that that that's, is an abbreviation. If you could say BB gun, I asked though. You he cheap did. bastard. Uh, we're going to allow Mobap because it is a. <laughs> this guy threw the ball at you. <laughs> I believe that is an all caps abbreviation. <laughs> <laughs> that's like saying Nasdaq. Jason, you know what I mean? On, that's what I thought. 
Rafe? I bet you did. Missouri Baptist. I got excited. I'm sorry. Jason, Jason. May, here's just Jason one, one little piece of advice, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe wait for the clue. Yeah. Missouri Baptist. <laughs> Maybe wait for the clue, <laughs> dog. I love your confidence, brother. All right. Oh, one clue. Hey, criminy. Wait for the clue. Uh, I, uh, dude, I had <laughs> my lips right, together. No clues. Right. I had my lips Final together. Clue. I was getting ready to say it. It's Amanda, wrong. Riz versus Jason and Moon. Final clue. Oh my gosh. Okay, here we go. And I'm uh, cringing, by the way. Everybody listening is like, this is so Riz cringe is passing. Right now. I'm gonna pass. You're passing. I'm passing. All right, Riz is passing. Jason and Moon for all the marbles. <laughs> Best two out of three. Third word. First clue, Jason, please listen to Moon Valjean. Okay, here we go. Lizard. Uh, Amanda, right? Listen. Color. Ready? Color. Color. ID. I love what did you? What did you say? Uh, okay. ID. You said caller. Are you saying color or Col a collar? Color. 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 Come <laughs> <laughs> no, on, dude. Okay. Where are Stop you? Stop talking, man. Amanda. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. <laughs> These are the worst callers I've ever heard in my life. Pay attention, everybody. Everybody, pay attention. Uh, I, hope you're, I hope you're listening, Jason. All right, I need it. Okay, here we, go. here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Ready, ready, ready? Changing. Oh, man. <laughs> this is your turn. Five seconds, Jason. I, Three seconds, Jason. Leaves? I, I don't know. All right, Amanda, listen up. <laughs> Riz, fourth clue, third word, for the love of God. <laughs> Get us to a new set of callers. I, I, do you, I'm not going to say anything else. Budweiser. What? Oh. Beer. Uh, is everyone so lost with all the, the, the wrong answers? This is being called the Fire Fest of Games, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> no, I love it. Oh, it's that. I love it. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So, oh, my uh, God. Am I able to repeat the words that have already been said? I, I, no. Okay. I don't know. I'm asking. I don't know. No, no, because that would be, t it would be lumpy. Yeah. Everybody needs to that have their That would be listening done. for them. Yeah, you got yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm going to try. I've been keeping track, but I was trying to let it go through three iterations before we get to that. <laughs> no, I got, I, got an, I got another clue. Okay, okay, let's see. Um, <laughs> eyes. Brain. Okay. okay. Amanda. Here we go. Camouflage. Hunting. Oh, my God. This is a hard one. All right, guys, I'm going to go over the... I am going given, to, now that we've done three guesses With each. the clues that we're given, if we can't put... The, the clues so far have been lizard. What was your second clue? Color. Color. Changing. Budweiser. <laughs> Eyes. Camouflage. All right. Okay. Uh, my, Try to listen in context of the game, everyone, that these are building on each other. Dis and disguise. There we go. Chameleon. Oh, thank oh, you. Yeah, thank you. Wow. Sorry, man. Jason sounded like clinically depressed by the time he got when he heard all this. Everybody's so depressed, man. I was afraid of going like to like name another reptile Please, or whatever. Next callers, listen to the previous clues. For the Are we playing time. again? I love this. We're going to well, continue. We have one more round. Let's I keep going. Around. Let's do this one all day. Uh, Michelle and Bob have been hanging and on. And think forever. about this, Michelle and Bob. <laughs> listen to all clues being given. That's what I'm saying. Please. And please. know that we're all trying to guess the same word. <laughs> yep. That in the nature of password, we are working towards getting to the same word. Michelle, pick somebody. Please. Riz, please. Okay. okay. Riz and okay. Michelle. Mistake. <laughs> Dude, I honestly thought you were, and you know what? Good. You were ready to go on your turn. You had them loaded up. I appreciate that. Seeing you Thank this you. upset, still wearing a smile, is my favorite part of doing That's this show. That's I People are saying this is NBA worthy, by the way. This entire game. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, I three know. broadcasters. <laughs> Bobby. <laughs> Bobby, pick somebody. I want Moon. Yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Yeah. I'm going three for three. It's good to see that the previous callers learned. <laughs> they learned nothing. I would have had communion on the third word. Yeah, right, Bobby. Nothing yeah, from the game. Right. Yeah, brother. Here we go, man. 
All, All right. right, come on over here and get a load of this freak show. Absolute chaos, worst callers ever, and so much noise from the room as well, <laughs> says one person in the chat. Great. Okay, so I'm with Michelle, so I go first. Riz and Michelle. Michelle. Riz, would you like to play or pass? I'm going to play. <clears throat> Michelle, are you ready to play? Yes. Yeah. Let's do it. Pay attention to all the clues. Ready, Michelle? Go. Mountain. Peak. Good guess. Soda. Mountain soda. I don't have a clue. You don't have a clue. <laughs> Riz? Green. Ooh, Mountain Dew. We're going to get Damn, a uh, That's it. Wait a minute. Did the you word say was mountain? Dew. Yeah, I said mountain. Oh, cool. The word was dew? The word, the word was, was, dew. was dew. Okay. okay. I got her to say dew, right? <laughs> you did. You but did, but you she said it as, she said Mountain Dew. But I'm going to give it to her okay, because you right. already clicked the button. <laughs> and <laughs> quite, quite honestly, at this point, I just want to get through this. Should I? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm just glad it didn't take 40 guesses. And that okay, they were all, right. all right, come get your it's second whatever. word. Michelle and Riz, you're up one nothing. Riz, you have the opportunity to play or pass okay. on this oh. word. Michelle and Riz. Riz, you want to play or pass? I'm on pass. <laughs> all right, I'm Bobby. Pass. Okay. Wow. Okay. Okay. Second word. <laughs> Out of three. On the third round of probably the last installment oh, of Riz Show oh, Password. Lara Beth says, I'm ready to open my door on Highway 40 and just roll out. <laughs> Did everybody's just Moon, give rolling the out of whatever, wherever they are right now. Okay. The, uh, That's so good. Okay, the clue is... The clue is... Mm, uh, boy. Barbecued? Steak? Shell. Yep. Happies. Um, brisket. Chest. Chest. Smoke. Shell. Pork. Yep. Pork. Ribs. Yeah. Boom, ah, dang, baby. Man, come on. Sweet. Thank you, Michelle. Michelle, thank, thank you. you. Hang on. Thank you. Dang. All right. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Everybody take a deep breath. Woo! Man. Woo! Oh boy. Now, was the word ribs <laughs> or was the word rib? I will take a, a, any iteration of the word. Huh. Okay. Rib or ribs uh, would need, have been I, I think we need to make sure that's specified. Because I was coming for ribs. Add it to the list of emails I don't want to read today. <laughs> uh, that was good. That was good. That was good. Oh, no one said rack. Guy. That was a yeah. Well, good get there. That was a clean. That was a clean round. I think rack was. Other that than, was a clean round. Other, other Last than, round, we finally <laughs> figured it out. <laughs> Hawaii. All right, let's uh, all shower up and we'll call her ID. <laughs> Farmer. <laughs> Lizard. Man. All right, crab on celebrities uh, next. It's eight thirty three. Man. Uh, Tuesday. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> All right, welcome back to the program. We got crap on celebrities here in just a second. A great article in the RFT. This is by uh, Steve Leffridge. Uh, did when when was Foreigner? Uh, last was it Friday. La last Friday. Okay. And Foreigner's got some. I mean, some huge songs. Mm -hmm. Love me some Foreigner. Hot blooded, urgent, cold as ice, uh, jukebox hero. Mm -hmm. Uh, what else? Double Vision, Head Games. Dude, they got some hits. And the article essentially is, is Foreigner a cover band at this point? How many original members of Foreigner are in the band? One. Zero. Oh, zero now. Zero people. What's more foreign than that? <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Foreigners. So all those hits, and th and this it's a it's a very interesting article. And this guy Steve is a fan of a Foreigner, and he's he's not really complaining. Because he said he still had a great time at the show. But he said, of all those hits that I that I mentioned, um, not one person on stage was responsible for any of those songs. <laughs> I guess the only guy that would would have been in the band is Mick Jones, right. who I guess was expected to be part of the tour. 
Yeah. He's had some health issues. Oh. Uh, was not at the St. Louis show. So zero people from the original Foreigner. Interesting. Are they, as this band, uh, with or without him, whoever you just said, uh, are they still making records? You know, I don't know. I don't know the the tour is billed as the historic <laughs> the historic farewell uh, farewell tour. Right. Um, so I guess the singer they got now he's he's been in the band forever, but not but he wasn't responsible for any of those those hit songs though. Mm -hmm. Well, th that's been the way it, it's been. Mick Jones was in the last time Foreigner came through, and then Lou Graham I want to say was like in and out of ra like he would show up to random shows. Yeah, Lou Graham is the original singer of Foreigner. If the people that are prop properly responsible for the building of the brand, which allows these individuals to make the tour uh, and make money doing this on, on those, if they're mm -hmm. somehow being compensated, then I think it's all good. If they're fairly being compensated for building the brand that these guys are making money on, I think it's totally reasonable like the, mm -hmm. for this brand to continue on as a money-making entity that brings joy to people's lives. Well, yeah. and it's everybody came on at different times, right? Right, that's what I'm saying. I'm sure it's some sort of stack, which I understand as long as it's you know not not particular bands well, so or the, brands that are built on one person's. So, so the singer foreigner now is a guy named Kelly Hansen. He's been in the band for 20 years, which is just as long, if not longer, than Lou Graham was. But Lou Graham wrote all those, or was responsible, or had an, a part in writing and singing all those hit songs. So should it be called foreigner, or should it be called like, and and this the the the. The argument in the article should it be like Kelly Hansen's foreigner experience. Yeah, mm. I think so. But I mean, like, like Sublime, Sublime tours with Rome. They do all this kind of stuff, and and uh, was Bradley. Uh, Bradley Noel. Like, yeah, his estate is still getting paid when, when they when they make money. He makes money, or she makes money. But that's Sublime with Rome. They they don't go by Sublime, right? That was, that was because of a lawsuit. Sure, but they're still going by Sublime, and I'm and I'm, you know what? I'm not going to say their business because I don't know this for a fact. But like, I I from what I understood. The, par the parties are involved for creating the brand that is now making money as the brand. They're getting uh, um, compensated, and, and therefore it's you know I mean there's there's some sort of fair deal you got to find. Yeah, that. I believe the yeah. Sublime with Rome is the product of a lawsuit filed by the estate of Bradley Knoll. Um, well, they would get paid anyway if, for songs played. Yeah. Songs played? No, I mean, dude, well, that's not how that's not how it works. It's false advertising, though. Sorry to interrupt. I that's was going to okay. say this because I I didn't know if Mick Jones was going to be on the stage last Friday or not. I wasn't at the show, but if I bought a ticket to Foreigner, thinking that okay, Mick Jones is the main component of the original Foreigner that I would want to go see maybe for the last time, and then he didn't show up. To me, I would almost want my money back. Really? really? Hmm. Yeah. So if you went to see Guns and Roses and Slash was out sick. Would you want your money if back? If Axel were there, Duff was there, I'd be okay. But, okay. I mean, sick I get. It's pretty much all about the lead singer. Sometimes. Oh, you think? Not always. Most of the time. Some, some, I don't know. Well, sure, yeah. Most, most of the this. time. I went but, to Nick Mason's saucer full of secrets just to see Nick Mason play the drums with the Pink Floyd music. Most of the time. I think if, I was, that was the point I was getting to. I wanted to see what you said, but I'm like, because I think if Axel was off, mm -hmm. people would be more mad than if Slash was off. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. If they went to a Guns N' Roses concert, and like, Axel didn't show up. But and it depends on the circumstances. Here's a guy. <laughs> you don't know him, but he's still going to get the Metallica. Uh, uh, James Hetfield's not there. You're pissed. You're yeah. pissed. And Lars you're, is you're, out. Lars out. You're it would have been cool it. to see Lars. Mm -hmm. Kirk That's Hammett's out. That's a good would've point. Would have been cool. Yo, d depends but on nobody's the circumstances. Singing. Well, if, if, like Metall James. if Metallica fired Kirk, I would no longer see Metallica. Really? Hell no, because Kirk is a giant part of that. Yeah, it's all about James, but it's not all about James. James is like an integral part, but Kirk is a Wait, yeah, it's huge all about part James. of that. No, it's not about James. I I'm saying like for, for some people it is, but like for for that particular band, like that's like that, that's like a three to th three to four piece. Yeah, and, yes. and and if they fired Kirk, there's no way in hell I would go. If you are a super duper one percenter fan. I don't think so. Uh, I don't. I don't think. James is not there. I think, there's, I think there's a lot of Metallica fans out there that if Kirk said, "Hey, I just can't tour no more," but Metallica is going to keep going, and he like gave it a blessing for who knows, who, whatever guitar player to go out there and fill the shoes, mm. that'd be a different thing. But if they fire Kirk and Kirk's sitting at home going, "This sucks. I don't want to be that. I, I don't oh, want to be I here." Think, I think Metallica's still selling that everywhere they go because oh, it, James Hetfield is the voice of that. Mm. Band. Okay, may, maybe so, but I bet you there's a lot of Metallica fans that would be like, "No, nah, -uh. Somebody brought this up in the chat, and as far as Foreigner goes, the ship of Theseus argument is like, when it, the ship set sail, they had to repair it as it sailed over the oceans, and new clapboards were put on, then new sails, then by the time they got to port, 
every piece of that ship had been replaced. Is it still the Theseus or is it a new ship? Hmm. That's kind of the foreign argument. It got rebuilt in such a way that someone's been there for 20 years now. What is that enough time in to be like, yeah, this is foreigner. I did. I paid my dues. You don't get to change the name just because the last member left. Or do you have to change the name? Well, here's the Leonard Skinner thing, too, because the last like forming member of Leonard Skinner just died. And so now I believe it's just Gary Rossington. Or is he the one that died? I can't remember. Gary Rossington didn't just died. Just died. Okay, so, um, God, who's the, there's a remaining member who wasn't an original member, but he's been with the band for pretty much the entire time. I can't think of his name right now. But that, people are going, well, can you still call it Leonard Skinner? You know, to me, I understand you want the music to live on, and these people that have toured with them deserve to be able to play still. But I think that you need to get to a certain point where you honor that, ooh, this has evolved into something that isn't the original, so that it's completely transparent with, like, the prolifer you know, like the periphery fan that maybe wouldn't understand that, oh, no true members are in Leonard Skinner anymore. Now, you can make the argument that, you know, David Lee Roth was out of Van Halen, but thank God they got a great new lead singer. K and yeah. yet, still call themselves Van Halen. I think, yeah, I think it's, I think it's case by case. Going back to Guns N' Roses, ACDC. You, you said, thank God, you know, they got a singer that could carry yeah. the, you know, carry the torch. If you said that, that you said that you would go see Guns N' Roses if Slash was out sick, mm -hmm. but what if right before the tour, Slash said, "These dudes just fired me." And they're still going on tour. I'm not going to see Guns N' Roses if that's the case. The Slash is different, though, because I've seen Slash a number of times with the Conspirators. So I feel like I have other opportunities to see him, whereas, like, when somebody's dead, you don't get an opportunity to see them anymore, and so the band just kind of moves on. So I don't know I don't if know. it's the I, same I think you may, be seeing it through, you may be seeing it through, like, a business, like, You're oh, they screwed, this, they screwed this guy, so I'm going to boycott them. No, I'm seeing it as a, as a fan. Like, I, like, I, I know, as I a fan, I'm seeing, I want to see Axl <clears throat> Rose sing the songs I know, and I could sing along. Okay, well then you're going to see Axel. I, I would I would be going to see Guns N' Roses. Ricky you know, Medlock you know was the guy from Skinner. I was thinking of. And I'm not saying people are wrong for doing either. Like it's it's whatever your fandom means, really. And and your fandom may may just mean you want to go to a concert and sing the songs. And Foreigner with no original members is totally fine. So you would never go see a band. No, case that by had case. fired a member. There's no there's no never. There's no oh. always. There's it's like a case by case kind of thing. It would depend on the reasoning. It would depend on how the brand was built, honestly. Like, what what does the band mean? What does it stand for? Is it literally just like a guy and there's a bunch of musicians? I don't know. I him? saw Guns N' Roses with the, with, with the guy with the KFC bucket on his head. Mm -hmm. With Buckethead? Was yeah, still was cool, it? dude. Was still cool because Guns N' Roses and Axl Rose. It was Axl Rose singing yeah. Guns N' Roses. Song. I weirdly looked that guy up yesterday. The re I don't <laughs> know. Name is That's weird that you brought it up. His name is Brian Carroll. No. And didn't people think it was Slash at one point back in the day? No, because he used to come out with Primus and, play, and do nunchucks. <laughs> <laughs> There's another band like that, too. Like, if you go, how many times has the band Chicago had interchanging members? Mm. But there's like Listen, 20 um, people on there's stage. There's like 20. That's yeah, like what I'm saying. But I think at least I one couldn't even original. name who's up there. But if you're like, I'm not going through a ticker list of like, Chicago's coming to town. Let's see who's up there. Yeah, but I think some of the original members are still in that band. I, I wouldn't know. There's so many. They have and they have some bangers. Yeah, they, they do. rocked it. Whoever was there though, did a great job. Peter Cetera's not with the band, and that's a lead singer. That is, mm -hmm. and that would make me go, eh. But I went to see Chicago. So it sounded good. More Joliet. <laughs> now is it still yeah. Chicago or is it a burb? No, is it's, it it's still, no, it's still Chicago. But it's like the the singer that I like who sang yeah, yeah. a lot of the great songs. I'm like, eh. Yeah, it's really, I'll, I'll go. It's really case by case. I'm thinking right now like Stone Temple Pilots. Like Stone Temple Pilots with Scott Weiland. But at the same up. time, when you real, if you're a fan of the band, then you know that those brothers are the band. Sure, and I'm a fan of the, the top ten band in my life. But they got this new guy, Jeff Goot, mm -hmm. who's good, who sounds like Scott Weiland. Yeah, he looks like Scott. He's and looks like to Scott, Scott Weiland too. On stage. It's a little strange. It's it's strange. Like I'll go, but I'm not gonna. Enjoy, I'm not gonna enjoy my. <laughs> Like, would you go okay. see us if sound if the rest of Soundgarden wanted to get out and do a Soundgarden? It depends tour. on who they got to sing. All right. All right. Today is uh, July twenty fifth. There are some things of note for today that happened in history. Uh, forty three years ago, actually, I'll go forty. Yeah, forty three years ago, nineteen eighty. Caddyshack that comes out today, nineteen eighty. Also, the same day, so Caddyshack comes out. Also, ACDC's seventh record, Back in Black, the first one with Brian Johnson. 40 years ago, 1983, Metallica's debut, Kill 'Em All, comes out. Ooh. 33 years ago, 1990, at a baseball game, it was a doubleheader. It was the 
San Diego Padres, Cincinnati Reds. This is what happened. And the boo birds favorite. are out. That <laughs> happened this day in 1990. It was a good day. You know, Roseanne never really admitted if it was a comedy, like a misguided attempt at comedy or not. I was going to say, like, why? Di I mean, yeah, it sounds awful, but that's her voice. And I don't, like, who decided that it was supposed to be a, a bad thing? What else could it have been? Well, remember question. she grabbed her crotch. Oh, well, she after she crotch? was booed. After she was booed, she, she spit and grabbed her crotch. All right, well. But I think that was a... Homage to baseball. To baseball. People took that as her doing it to the fans. I think that was her comedic homage to, like, baseball players grab their crotch and spit a lot. Oh, see, I, I remember it being toned as, or, or like... It was sold that explained way. to me. It was sold to me that she was doing it to the anthem, to America. Well, right. it was, it was, yeah, it was, the, it was the screeching of the anthem that the, I thought was the bigger story. Right. But w what do you think you're getting, Wendy? She's an interesting character, man, yes, because I was... Watching an old episode of Roseanne the other day, and I was thinking, like, she has literally occupied both ends of the spectrum. Yeah. Of yeah, yeah. Politically, you know what I yeah. mean? And like, I don't, I don't, I'm not wading into politics here. I'm just saying, like, she. It's it's very much a what have you done for me lately world. And it was really interesting to see in the '90s, like first pro, first person to really put gay characters on her show, mm -hmm. and where them being gay wasn't the joke. Uh, prominently featured characters like that when the show came back out. I, you know, she had a lot of progressive things in the '90s that, that back then were could get a show taken off the air. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. It could kill a show, and she did a lot of stuff. And then somehow now, fast forward this many years, and now she's been put held up as this like you know conservative centerpiece. Yep. It's it's really interesting to see the trajectory of her career. Over the years. Over the years. And I, you know, I don't know what's going on with her. Because she had some, like, other really horrible tweets the other day. I don't remember what they were, but she's an um, interesting character. And on this day in 1999, 24 years ago, the overcrowded Woodstock 99 Music Festival in Rome, New York, ends in fires, looting, and multiple sexual assaults. And you were there. And I was there. I did not participate in any of those things. Good. And that's what happened back in the day. All right, time to find out what's going on in the world of music and entertainment with your crap on celebrities. And it's brought to you by Bright House Plumbing. Call the best. Flush the rest. Brighthouseco.com. 636-600-0188. Pete Davidson was charged with reckless driving last month. TMZ reported last week that he entered a diversion program without pleading guilty and no contest to the offense. So uh, now he must comply with a set of interesting conditions, he has to serve community service over the next 18 months. Uh, first up, 50 hours of community service at the New York City Fire Department where his late father worked and later died in the 9-11 tragedy. He also has to tackle 12 hours of traffic school uh, where he'll get, he'll get a firsthand lesson on the impact of reckless driving um, by spending time at a morgue. And if Pete successfully completes these tasks, he'll dodge any criminal offense on his record. Thoughts? Well, good luck, Pete. Good luck, buddy. Good luck, Pete. Yesterday, we were, gets it all together. we were talking about uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. He's been crowned the highest paid celebrity on Instagram. He uh, dethroned Kylie Jenner. Okay. And so, uh, Ronaldo, he is uh, earning around $2.4 million per post. So, every time Instagram. he posts something for a brand, yes. he gets paid $2.4 million. That's what he can charge. Wow. Damn. 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 Tom Brady clearly has a type. It's supermodels. I, can I just say this? I don't find Tom Brady very attractive. And I think that Giselle um, is a total babe. Judges. <laughs> His bank account. Do you find him attractive? Yes. Really? <laughs> He's quite plain to me. <laughs> He's very attractive. Take the bank account out. Oh. I, I just think that I love that he's TB bilingual. 12? Yeah. T B twelve? Uh yeah. You're aroused. By Tom Brady. I don't yeah. like it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. It's too many eggs in one basket. <laughs> that needs, the Lord needs to spread that out a little better. Yeah. You don't get to be handsome. Six, six, 
supermodel looks and also be one of the greatest quarterbacks of NFL history? Like, come on. You know why I appreciate Spread it? a little of that wealth around. Because if you ever see, like, pictures of Tom Brady on the beach and he's, you know, shirtless. Uh-huh. He's not, like, cut and, like, chiseled out with the, with the six-pack. He looks kind of like a normal dude. He yeah. looks like a Ken Barbie doll to me. Yeah. Not in a good way. It's money, though. Somebody has, there's a good post you can look up where it's like, Tom Brady's not handsome, he's just rich. And it shows, like, his his rookie year f- photograph. And he was, like, kind of pudgy and cross-eyed. Oh, the, co- the combine photo? He had, like, a unibrow. <laughs> it was kind of like, he did, definitely was not, like, what I would call mm-hmm. yeah. a, heart, a heartthrob. You and then see- they show what? him, like, yeah. as he gets more money. Dude. He gets like better looking and better looking. It happens with everybody. Look, look yeah. at uh, look at uh, Tom Cruise's early early photos. Look at Cristiano Cristiano Ronaldo when he was young. He didn't look like that. His well, teeth his, his his teeth didn't look like that. Well, yeah. You ever see uh, the combine photo of Tom Brady? He's in like the white boxers. Yeah. And that's and fine. Like, <laughs> and that's fine, by the way. The majority of us like don't look our best at twenty one. We just don't. Yeah. Not even at twenty five. It's awkward. like like we're really coming into it about thirty two, man. Well, I just, I, I feel like he shouldn't be getting, take the money aside and, the, you know, I guess he's obviously a great football player, but I've just never been attracted to him at all. I've never thought like, ooh, that guy, ever. Oh. Huh. But he's uh, reportedly dating, according to TMZ, Irina Shayk, another supermodel, and... Um, she was one with Bradley Cooper forever. They were spotted oh. in a car together, and uh, Tom was <laughs> caressing Irina's cheek. In a car together. That don't mean huh? nothing. Whoa. And uh, Giselle at first wasn't happy, but now she says she is happy because it's helpful for her freedom that he has moved on now. Wait, they were in a car together? Uh-huh. Oh, you and know they spent the means. weekend together. You know they were there. driving somewhere. That's yeah, right. they're just buds. In a recent interview, Jelly Roll opened up about his interest to tap into acting, and the inspiration came from watching uh, Machine Gun Kelly find success as an actor with the Motley Crue movie. Somebody was suggesting, Rich Show listener was suggesting to me, because I said last week on the air, I didn't really understand like the jelly roll. I just don't like his music. Um, and she said that I need to check out his documentary, I guess, on Hulu. Have you, has anybody no, watched it? it? I'm going to watch it just to see what I'm missing. But anyway, um, while it seemed to have worked out for Motley Crue and Queen, don't expect a Guns N' Roses biopic anytime soon. Slash shared that uh, he, he thinks it's always fabricated, over-exaggerated BS. It's very rare that you see a movie that actually feels genuine and that he would not want to participate in anything. Read Slash's book. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Yep. Interesting life. So good. Paramore had to postpone another set of dates due to the ban. They have an illness spread throughout the touring party. They're coming in town this Sunday, and so I'm hoping that they still uh, make that show. It's almost sold out, if not. Uh oh. So hopefully they'll be. It's on so far, right? We're all good. Yeah, I haven't heard anything. Ozzy Osbourne says uh, yet more medical issues are part to why he's been canceling appearances, most recently the Power Trip Festival in October. He says, I went to have a filter removed because I had blood clots in my leg. They put a filter in your artery to stop the blood from clotting to your heart and your brain. He says it sounds worse than it is, but I had to have it removed. And he's he's just really depressed. I, I don't think he's one of these people that expected the end of his career to be at a halt as much as it mm. is. And he um, he sat down with Ozzy Speaks show co-host Billy Mor- Morrison to talk about that, and it's the whole interview. Man, you can check it's, out. it's crazy. Like, t- like his age caught up with him, like, real quick. Real quick. Who, who's this? Who's this? Ozzy. Ozzy. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, everybody thought he... Remember, it, it was just, like, found he had, like, Neanderthal blood. Does, like, that's why, like, nobody could ever kill Ozzy. Yeah, it's so funny you say that, though. But <laughs> if you remember in 2003 or 2002 <laughs> yeah. when we were watching the Osbournes, we were all we all said the exact same thing. Man, his health caught up with him real quick. I mean, come on, man. Yeah, this but that he equates quick. to like years. drugs and. Well, I'm just saying. Like he was we've seen on this pill. coming for some but, time. But after that show ended, there was a period where he was vi- like lucid and wasn't slurring. Like he he. Yeah, yeah. Equates all that to him being hammered most of the time mm-hmm. on that show. By the way, uh, the chat is agreeing with you. A lot of these gals are on, on the chat saying, "I don't find Tom Brady attractive either." And Rise then somebody up, ma- somebody made the point and said, "Guys." find Tom Brady attractive. That's, yeah, I could see that one. More than women do. Yeah. That's interesting. That's why he's dated hundreds of supermodels because we all think he's hot. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe no, I just supermodels great like theory. his money. No, I, I, just, I think they're saying like we find him attractive because you know he's like a good looking dude football who's, player. who's ultimate yeah. athlete richer than God. You know? Yeah. Yeah, but I don't see Bridget Moynihan dating an offensive lineman. Do you know what I'm saying? Like it's not... There's something else at play here, right, besides football stardom. 
I got one more. Elon Musk might have trouble with his effort to change the name of Twitter to X. Mark Zuckerberg's meta has already registered the X logo for the social networking services. So this add this into the ring. Well, I tell you what, they're just going to fight it out in the cage. I think that's it. And finally, the name X. Rotten Tomatoes ranked every Batman movie, narrowed it down to, let's just do uh, top five since uh, went on a little longer. Every Batman movie. Every Batman movie. <sighs> what do you think the top problems. five Okay, so was. the number one is going to be the one with Heath Dark Ledger, Knight. Dark Knight. You're right about that. Yep. <clears throat> number two, what is it? I, I, you know, it's funny. Real quick, I uh, was looking at the uh, list of the best Christopher Nolan movies of all time, and Dark Knight was, Dark Knight, sir. was it's his a great one. one. Mm -hmm. um, I, I First bet Batman. Batman number one with Michael Keaton? Should be. Uh, Michael Keaton 89 and, uh, the original. And, Michael, uh, Danny DeVito? That was no, number no. Danny DeVito was number two. Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson. Um, that one came in at number seven. What? See, yeah. For, 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 for our generation, that's probably number one or number two, but you got to remember, man, there's so many people who lived after that. No. That they're gonna Wrong. say they're gonna say Dark Knight Rises or Batman Begins is number two, right? That's Dark Knight Rises. Okay, then Batman Begins. Dark Knight Rises with Bane. Yeah, which was good. You gotta okay. rewatch it. It was just so lengthy, so intense. No. Batman Begins is number four, man, with Christian Bale and Katie Holmes and Killian Murphy. That was the first. That was the first Nolan. And right, I first Nolan movie. I, I, that's actually my favorite. Mine I prefer too. that one to the the second. The Joker one. Okay. Yeah, that's my favorite. Followed by the Michael Keaton original, followed by uh, Dark Knight. Then Dark Knight Rises. Then number th uh, number two, Batman Two. Yeah, but you got it with Danny DeVito. With Danny DeVito. That's number Chris five. And they Christopher have to have Walken. Adam West in this, right? Oh, dude. I mean, ba go watch like that. One of the old school Batmans that are so funny and they're with awesome. the shark spray. The movie is the one with the shark spray. Yes, that's, that's the, the thing. The Adam West and Burt Ward Batman from 1966 is number six. Okay, so good. just out of top five. It's got to be in there. The only one you guys haven't guessed is actually number three. Can Joker be on this? Is that one of the? Uh, uh, no, it's going to uh, be the new Zack the Snyder's? Batman. That's and right. that movie oh, yeah, sucked. Oh, I thought it was alright. That right, movie man. was, was trash. Right. That movie was like someone made a a bad Kinko's copy of a Christopher Nolan. I thought it was okay. It was so long and it. boring. It was long. It could have they could have shaved about an hour off it. The, and I love Paul Dano, but that Riddler was just like that was Heath Ledger from Wish. It was not good. <laughs> <laughs> it was not good. I liked it. I, I liked, liked it. it. It was my favorite. I saw it in the theater. Maybe it was. I thought it was, I was long and song. boring. Maybe because I was with my boy. I love Batman, dude. Yeah, I liked it because I've only seen it once. I have no idea how I feel about it. If I, if I, saw I wouldn't it see it times. again. I saw it once. It, yeah, weird. Um, it's a big birthday uh, day today, guys. Celebrity celebrating birthday. Louise Brown, that's the uh, world's first test tube baby. Oh, wow. Born in Oldham, England. She's 45. Matt LeBlanc, Joey Tribbiani is 56. Right. Roger Clinton, that's the brother of Bill and the star of Biodome, Spy Hard, and Pumpkinhead 2, Blood Wings, is 67. And Iman. David Bowie's widow, Iman, is 68 years old. All right, today's porno birthday, which is being brought to you by Patricia's, where fun and fantasy meet, is Tara Patrick. And today's birthday girl has been in 183 fine films, including Asian Street Hookers, 6 and 7, Bangkok Horse 3, Ecstasy Girls 2, Farmer's Daughters Do Beverly Hills, Hottest Bitches in Porn 2, Sex in Dangerous Places, Where the Boys Aren't, 18 and 19, and Who Can Forget a Role, in 1999's Tara Patrick, a.k.a. Filthy Whore. Wow. Tara, pa Tara Patrick is uh, 47 years old. That's your porno birthday. Those are your crappy birthdays, yeah, and that was your too. crap on celebrities. <sighs> I met her once. She was, uh, I think, she, is she still with the guy from Biohazard? Oh, wow. Evan Seinfeld, lead singer of Biohazard. Hmm. I think they were married. Man, I need to see the Batman again. I just need to see if I even, I mean, I really liked it. I wanted to. But I have no desire to see it again. No. That's the weird it's thing. It's long. That's it's a commitment. All right, a couple, uh, couple, two, three of your emails after the break. It is 9.09. All right, got a couple minutes left. Uh, let's finish up with sports. All right, Moon, what do we got? Sports are brought to you by DraftKings at Casino Queen. Uh, presented by DraftKings at Casino Queen. Play, stay, dine at DraftKings at Casino Queen. Adam Wainwright was going for his 199th win. But he had to stay for, uh, you know, a certain amount of pitches and innings to even qualify for that win. He ended up throwing a lot more pitches than expected, closed out the fifth inning, and he was eligible. He just, he just needed the bullpen to do its job and hold the lead. <laughs> they didn't. They blew it. But then nice. the Arizona Diamondbacks bullpen blew their lead. So a seesaw of leads against relievers on both sides cost Wainwright the win, but ended with a Cardinals victory, so that's good. Goldschmidt had a key RBI. Lars Newbar took a big walk. And Tyler O'Neill emptied the bases with a three-run double in the ninth to catapult the Cards to a 10-6 yeah. comeback win last night in Arizona. They go again, same place, same time, 8.40 p.m. Central from Arizona. 
Uh, that's tonight. Liga MX's Atlas FC issued an apology Monday. Did you guys see this? This was, this was after a post from the team's Twitter account. The team's Twitter account referenced a Nazi propaganda minister, quote, from Joseph Goebbels in an effort to argue <laughs> an offside call. What did it say? The call in question came from Atlas FC's one uh, one nothing win over New York City Football Club uh, in the League's Cup play on Sunday. The League's Cup pits teams from Mexico's Liga MX against MLS. So, an NYC FC goal that would have tied the game at 1-1 was overturned via video assistant referee. That's the VAR because of an offside call. And here's what they tweeted. Quote, this shot is clearer than water. The offsides happens on the first play. The tweet reads via translation from like Spanish to English and then goes into, it is regrettable how influencers and media analysts manipulate creating ideas of supposed assistance. But remembering what Goebbels, Nazi minister of information, quote, or I'm sorry, uh, parentheses, Hitler's right-hand man, um, parentheses, said, and they apply it perfectly. Lie, 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 and something will remain. The bigger the lie, the more the people will believe it. So they didn't just, like, use the quote. They, like, full-on said, from Goebbels. And attributed it to him. Hitler's yes. guy. Yeah, that is a, that is a, that's actually a famous yeah. line. But to throw it into a into tweet a... about a <laughs> goal overturned is so that... odd choice of... So, of course, Monday, they apologized for the tweet, stating the club's solidarity, friendship, and affection for the Jewish community. I'll put the tweet and the whole story up there. It's pretty wild. And then Casey Eugen Fair made World Cup history Tuesday in Sydney, Australia. Fair entered South Korea's 2 nothing loss to Colombia in the 77th minute of uh, in the country's first game at the World Cup this month. 16 years old, something like eight days younger than the last record holder. That officially makes Fair the youngest to ever take the pitch at a Women's World Cup. Fair was born in Korea but grew up in the U.S. Her mom's Korean, her dad is American. They moved to the U.S. when she was just a month old and she started playing soccer a few years later. They settled in Jersey where she scored 25 goals in 15 games last fall as a freshman at the Pingri School. Fair is trained with both the U.S. Women's National Team Camp and South Korea. Pretty incredible. Imagining, just Can you imagine being called up to a national first team at 16 years of age and mm. playing in a freaking World Cup. That's awesome. Congratulations to her. That is so very cool. I'll put the full story up on the blog. blog. I'm Moon, and that's your sports because some of us love playing with balls. Hey, you see this uh, story about the YouTuber, this YouTube prankster? I love YouTube pranks. You know that. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's your favorite. Uh, this guy, uh, Gideon, J-I-D-I-O-N. So this guy has been banned at all NBA events because he bought front row tickets for a WNBA game and then spread out across three seats with a blanket and uh oh, like a, no. <laughs> it sounds like your kind of guy. <laughs> with a blanket and and uh, uh pillow. Mm. Did he have one of those hats like a sleeping cap like, like they, I, they, they Yeah, they he did. No. No, he's banned from NBA and He's w banned from yeah, or just WNBA. He's banned from every NBA event oh and my gosh. WNBA event. He's, he's got the striped sleeping pants. He's got pajamas on, and he's got the sleeping hat. He does. This is awesome. And they're walking him out. They're going to wake him up first. They're going to have to wake him up. Look, look, he's pretending to, to, to be a woke. <laughs> <laughs> he does have the long sleeping cap on. <laughs> wow. Like Scrooge. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like he's Scrooge. That's so funny. It's funny. They're saying it's disrespectful. It is you know, disrespectful. The yeah, yeah those it refs are out there working really so. hard. Yeah. Yeah. That's vicious. Yeah, what? So. I just imagine him in the office like, what? Well, at first he said he's got narcolepsy. Sure he does. <laughs> <laughs> sure you do. He was just prepared for it. Yeah, Bob, what? And you know the front outfit. office is bummed too. He's like, whoa, we got a ticket sell. And then like, oh. I got oh, a disease. Goodness. It's Let's narcolepsy. See, this goes back to... The argument we had a few days ago, technically, was he being disruptive? Right. No. But there's decorum. He was laid out across four <laughs> seats. 100%. He, I'm not saying he didn't deserve to be booted. I'm saying the argument we were making the other day was what are fans entitled to when they pay for a ticket? I think it's fine to boot this dude. I think he was being a... Yeah. A trash person. Yeah. All right. We got to take one final break. We'll come back and we'll wrap her up. All right. That is it for us. Uh, Donnie Fandango is next. Thank you all for tuning in. Today's Pappy's 
Recappy. Brought to you by Pappy Smokehouse St. Peter's. It's your summer barbecue headquarters, Highway 70 and Mid-Rivers Mall Drive. Boy, did we cover a lot of ground today. Oh, oh I'll man. Say, I'll say one Woo! of the highlights was Password. Oh, my. If you ever want to see Riz just, like, lose his mind but still somehow have a smile on his face, go watch the, uh, the, the podcast. <laughs> The playlist is up on YouTube. You can see the entire show, the entire video. Because uh, you're going to want to see video. You're going to want to see his face. The whole thing. It, it, yeah, it really was package. worth it. But you can check out the podcast available on all podcast directories, especially uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all your favorites. Uh, you're going to hear about an experienced hiker that we talked about today. She was uh, jogging near Yellowstone National Park, and it did not end well, unfortunately. And what was the word we learned? Insanguinated. Ins insanguination. Insanguination. Thank right? you. Yes. All right. Look at yes. the big brain on Brad. Uh, that also, was, I mean, four hours ago. It's right. crazy. We have a uh, uh, an entire list here on what the smartest things to do for you uh, are after somebody hits your car. If you get in a car accident, what to do. Some uh, cookies got recalled because they have rocks in it. You're going to want to know where, where those cookies are. Uh, check it all out on the blog and the podcast. Oh, also, big news in the uh, theme park world. A giant new huge theme park is uh, going to be rivaling Disney. And, yeah, it's right here in the Midwest. You're going to love it. It ain't far. Uh, what was it, four hours, five four hours? Four or five like hours. Okay. Ain't too bad. 1057thepoint.com slash Riz. Today, the podcast title you're looking for is The Fire Fest of Games. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Yes, you're welcome. Uh, yes. 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 Uh, Scott, anything else? Have some. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah. Rafe? Nope, I'm good. Learn. Follow me on the socials, Learn versus Radio. I good. would like to wish you an energy up. Okay. Well, we leave you with a selection from our Team Riz member of the day, which is brought to you by Hotshot Sports Bar and Grill. Proud sponsor of Team Riz, visit hotshotsnet.com slash Team Riz. From St. Louis, Beth Loretta is our yeah, Beth. Team Riz. Yeah. And Beth wants to hear this song, and here it is. Good one. Всем привет! С вами Иван Барбашов, и вы слушаете The Riz Show на 1057 The Point. С днем рождения, Riz!